Greetings, everyone. It is Dynasty Mayor Search for Uhuru. Thank you so much for joining us. As we always do, before we get started, we just want to thank you all for the support. It really means a lot. Again, thank you all for supporting Search for Uhuru. Uh, make sure you guys go to DynastyAmir.com. Again, make sure you go to DynastyAmir.com. While you're there, buy the critically acclaimed Kinky Hair is Queenly Hair, you guys. Kinky Hair is Queenly Hair for our daughters, our nieces. Mothers as well. Y'all need to read this book too. Make sure you cop the book, everyone. Again, make sure you cop the book. Again, go to Dynasty Mirror and buy, buy a copy. And also while you're there, buy some Nelia. Africa is my therapy shirt. You need to buy one. Again, there's 82,000 of you. Again, 82,000 of you all. So each one of you should have a book. So again, go to DynastyMirror.com and support. Also, like, share, and subscribe to the content. Again, like, share, and subscribe to the content. And then become a monthly Patreon, you guys. Become a monthly Patreon. Patreon.com, search for Uhuru. Again, Patreon.com, search for Uhuru. Support Black Media. Again, we don't have the budget. We don't have the CBS, NBC, ABC, TNT, uh, BET, MTV, HBO, CNN. Like, we don't have those budgets, you guys. So, we need uh, your guys' support. So, again, become a monthly Patreon. You know, hit that super chat, uh, hit that cash app, hit all the apps and, and support you guys. And then also, tour announcement we have the tour. Uh, April, let me go ahead and shout that out real quick. Pull up this flyer. Bam, there we go. One second, you guys. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Uh, but guys, Sierra Leone, you need to be there with us. Again, Sierra Leone, you guys, you need to be there with us. April 21st to the 30th, family. You need to roll. You need to roll to Sierra Leone, April 21st to the 30th. Uh, first time me taking a, an actual group to Sierra Leone. Uh, so come and roll with us. Flight is included. Visa is included. We're staying at the Radisson Blue in Freetown, everyone. We're going to have an awesome time. We're going to enjoy the beautiful beaches of Sierra Leone, the culture, the food. You know, I'm greedy as hell. I love to eat. So y'all will be eating real good with me. Again, come and enjoy the natural beauty of Sierra Leone. I'm going to go to Bo. Check out my village in Bo. Again, we're going to do a little bit of everything, you guys. So please come. You got a village us. out there, too? Say, say that again? You got a village out there, too? Well, I have a chief to see title. I'm a chief in, in Bo Sierra Leone as well. That's awesome. I wish I could be a chief, man. So... So everyone, April 2021, we're going to get back on the road, man, back on these planes and back into the continent, back onto the continent. I know some people that uh, they're back in Ghana right now as we speak. The minute they open up the borders, they're like, we out. So we're going to put this COVID thing behind us and we're going to get back to traveling. So everyone come and join us in Sierra Leone. Join me in Sierra Leone, you guys. We are leaving out of Atlanta and we're headed to Freetown, everybody. Celebrating Sierra Leone Independence Day, Independence Week. Uh, have, let's have some fun, everybody. Shout out to my sister, Fafa Malal. Uh, Baoni. Uh, so, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Without further ado, without further ado, we have my brother, Pan-Africanism Strikes Back. And today's topic is you know, so Brandon, there's this, you know, and I want to really break it down. There's this, uh, you always hear, hear this, uh, this misconception, Africans versus African-Americans. And it's not African versus African-Americans, if anything. And again, guys, I'm, I'm not trying to call, cause divisiveness or division. Um, but if anything, the misunderstanding is between African-Americans and African immigrants. Because when I get to the continent, it's all good. 
it's all good when I get to the continent, no problem. So I think the misunderstanding is between African immigrants and African Americans. And again, guys, this doesn't go for everyone. You know, I, I know this is a uh, grossly, 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 and wrongfully propagated and exaggerated. This whole so-called beef is really not an issue. But when it is an issue, which is rarely, is the African immigrants versus the African Americans. But again, like I said, when I go to Africa, it's no problem. No problems at all. So why do some Africans who leave Africa have a problem or have all these disclaimers or what structure for the African Americans who are planning on returning to Africa? <clears throat> why is that? Brandon, go ahead and introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are. Hold on a second. Massa, 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 Massa. You're shaking this table, son. Daddy yeah. mode. There you go. All right, go ahead, Brandon. Uh, hi, my name is Brandon. Uh, I have a channel, Pan-Africanism Strikes Back. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Uh, feel free to go over there and like and subscribe. Um, and I'm just a regular guy who goes to Africa from time to time, and I plan on moving there permanently soon. I'm just like you. Hey, uh, Brandon, is your, how, how, what's your, how, how's your wife feel about you? You guys moving, relocating to Africa, your wife and your daughter? <laughs> I don't know how they feel because whatever I say we're gonna do, that's just what we do. Okay, all right, never mind. No, my wife is just whatever. My wife, she's very supportive. She doesn't care. She said, "You ain't led me wrong this thus far, so I'm down for the cause." My daughter, she's just like, "Do I have to clean my room?" I'm like, "Maybe we'll hire somebody to do it for you." She like, okay. right? Because over there, you could get a house help to clean. clean yeah, room. yeah. My daughter is real easy. You know, she's cool. But you know that's because she's raised right. You know what I'm saying? So she like we're gonna actually. Uh, my wife has been to Africa before, uh, but my daughter's never been. So in J January, we're gonna do like a family trip and head over there, just so my daughter could get a a feel for what it's like. And so I'm gonna go in October, and then we're gonna go back in January. But we're gonna go to South Africa in January. Hey, uh, Rob Green, thank you for hey, shout out to Rob Green. Thank you for the super chat, brother. Uh, Rob, Rob Green, what I need you to do is take a picture with the book. Again, Rob, take a picture with the book and email it to me at Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. Uh, the, the email is in the chat room, Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. All right, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, so, yeah, but, but, but pretty much very supportive, you know what I'm saying, uh, understands, you know, the situation that we're dealing with over here in the States. And just you know, just keeps it real. My, you know, my wife keeps it real on every on every level. Okay. So as far as the disclaimers that many African, not in fact, I don't want to say many, some. Okay, again, some. Again, we don't want to exaggerate this so-called misunderstanding because it's really not as big as some people like to paint it or try to propagate or say that it is. It's really not that serious of an issue. Some like to exaggerate and say it's a serious issue, but it's really not. It's really not an issue at all. But for the small few who have an issue or a problem or worried or want structure for in place for African-Americans who plan on returning to Africa, why is that, Brandon? I mean, f first I would say it is an issue, Dinah's. And it really is a big issue because I feel like the anti, you know, the anti return, like the anti, uh, I don't know what word we'll describe it, but this, this, this feeling that African immigrants have when it comes to, uh, you know, this negative like approach towards Af African diasporans going back to Africa, you know, it, 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 it has, it takes a toll. And I believe that it's one of the biggest deterrence of African diasporans uh, re returning back to Africa. Like, besides the white man, uh, besides money and all this stuff, it really keeps people uh, it keeps people from wanting to go back. And so we already have forces at work, powers at work, who are working to keep African diasporans from going to Africa, right? 
we we have people working to do that. So it, it actually uh, perpetuates that same sentiment or mindset. Uh, it, 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 it's hard to convince somebody to go back to Africa when they say, well, an African told me not to go back. He's from there, and he told me that I shouldn't go there because I might get kidnapped or I might get raped or all this type of stuff. So, so I think it is a big deal because if what we want to do is for our people to build a bond based on kinship, you, it's hard to do that sit, truly on a large scale when you got a group of people who basically have an anti, you know, unity agenda who actually have more access to diasporans than the Africans on the continent. Now, someone in the chat room said, and I completely disagree with this, they're afraid of African-Americans bringing that hood stuff or hood culture to Africa. My response is African-Americans won't be the problem. It's going to be the Africans who left and decided to come back who are going to be the issue. What are your thoughts on that, Brandon? Well, you know, Africans on the continent are afraid of us bringing hood stuff, right? Because that's what they're told we're all about. Let's be realistic. We do not teach the world about who we are. Other races teach the world about who African Americans are right? So they have them thinking we're all boys in the hood, gangbanger, New Jack City, drug dealers, walking around cripping and blood and all that stuff. That's what they, they think about us. So that's part of it, right? But I have yet to see a person on the continent of Africa uh, tell me, walk up to me and ask me, am I a crip or a blood? Or ask me about any of that stuff. So really, and then the Africans who are you know, in the out, out, in the diaspora, the ones who are immigrants from Africa, those people just use that stuff as like a fear tactic, like fear mongering. Oh, they got this, they got that. But the really re the reality is, I believe that they don't want us to go back because they want to continue to be able to exploit their uh, the African people back home in in one way or another, right? Like, what like if this guy sends money back home? Like he's running stuff back home because he sends money back home. So as the Africans on the continent become more economically empowered, I believe that they fear that the, the there will be like the breakdown of these monopolies that they have in their own little communities where they basically get to run stuff because they're the one who's feeding everybody. And I know like Nigerian doctors and lawyers who have whole villages, you know what I'm saying? They feeding 20 families, they build in churches and all types of stuff in their village. That guy doesn't want me to come through, start a business and employ and employ and build a factory and employ half the village. Now those people don't necessarily have to be dependent on him. So now he can't have as much control as maybe he once had, you know? And I really think that that's where the fear is rooted. It's like this ability to control. And that's the same reason the white man fears black or African Americans leaving America. Everything is about controlling black folks, whether it's someone else controlling us or us controlling each other. It's all rooted in control. Mm. Guys, make sure you hit that like button. We have almost 300 people watching. Please hit that like button again. Look, Stay somebody, on the pole. Dinah, somebody said, let me tell you, see, and this is the type of stuff right here. You see this comment by, by True Value 77? No, nah, what'd he say? He says, that's not it, Brandon. It's the fear of the white man's mentality. American to be specific. Now, let me tell you why that's ignorant, right? How can you say it's the fear of the white man's mentality when Africans are in Africa who will give their left foot to be able to come to America, go to a white university, marry a white woman, and totally adopt the white man's mentality? There are Africans in Africa who have the white man's mentality. So how can you claim that you fear something that you work your whole life to go try to make to gain, right? Then I go to Africa, there's people, ooh, I want to work hard so I go to school in Europe. I want to work hard so I go to school in America. Africans don't fear the white man's mentality. That is just a cop-out. That is a cop-out. The people you elect to be the presidents of your countries have a white man's mentality. So what the hell are you talking about? You fear the white man's mentality. Uhuru Kenyatta in Kenya has way more in common than a with a white person than he has with me or you or the people who he, who he rules over. 
Name any African president and they got more in common with a white man than they do with anybody they rule over. These people have whole estates in Europe. They go to Europe for medical treatment, went to Europe for schooling, went to the United States to go to school. You know, most of you guys' presidents went to school in the United States. So who really has the white man's mentality? Right, the pictures of white Jesus all over the place. Bro, we went to, I went to church. For one, y'all, it's Africans who are Catholics, okay? That's not a big thing in America with black people. There's not a lot of black Catholics in America. You love white Jesus, but talking about you fear the white man's mentality and true values. You have to understand that that is called a cop out. That's called hypocrisy. When you claim to be scared of something, but on the other side, you totally am trying to embrace it. It doesn't work. You're not afraid of the white man's mentality. You're afraid that we will come in between you and whatever butter biscuits you think that the white man got designated for you. If they come over here, they might take away the little bit of stuff that the white man gave us. Like, this is the reality. They they don't, it's like, uh, Dinah, I compare it to like this. You know how like somebody, you have a girl in school. You don't want to date her. You don't want her, but you don't want to see nobody else with her. You know what I'm saying? Somebody else with her, you get mad, but you don't want to be with her. That's how African immigrants are. They don't want to be in Africa, but they want to get stay upset when somebody else go to Africa. When somebody else sees the value in the place they left behind, couldn't wait to get out of. Somebody said Christianity is just a way of life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and look, and that's exactly the, the reason why you need African diasporans to come back to Africa. Christianity is a way of life. So if it's a way of life, that means it is your life. Like, yo, we just worship Jesus every day. Pray to this dude every day. Come on, bro. We, we're, And I believe we represent the evolution of the consciousness, Dinah. We're getting to the point where we're starting to reject the European thinking and mindset. And I really think that that's what a lot of people fear because they don't know what lies on the other side of that. People are like, well, if they don't believe in Jesus, what do they believe in? You know, Dinesh, you wear the Ifa voodoo, you know, shirt. You know, right. like I know, if you wear that in Africa, you're going to get more people. There's places you could go in Africa. If you wear that shirt, they'll kill you. You know that. That's spiritism. That's witchcraft. You'll get more pushback for wearing that shirt in Africa than you will in America or any other place where there's African people in the globe. But they talking about they fear the white, that they fear us bringing over the white mindset. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make sense. You, but there's people in Africa who made a Chinese person chief. Only thing I'll make a Chinese person chief of is manicuring these damn toes, dog. That's, <laughs> he, can, he can rule over these cuticles, dog. That's about it. Y'all didn't put this dude up on y'all's shoulders cheering them and everything else. And I'm telling you, all he's qualified to do is fry up the chow mein, but y'all don't understand that. And that's why it's needed for us to come because we need to teach you guys how to interact with these other races because you guys, it, it, it evolves too quickly into a worship type relationship. It, it can't be just a partnership or a friendship. It's more like, yo, these people came over and it's like when the Africans a long time ago, you remember Shaka Zulu when the dude took the uh, shoe polish and put it in Shaka hair and covered up his grays and Shaka Zulu thought he had got younger. He thought he was giving him magic, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of how Africans look at when they look at other races like Chinese and stuff. It doesn't remain just a, 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 a relationship that is, you know, between colleagues, you know, it, it turns into a worship type relationship and and that's what that's what we get need to be over there to stop. We need to stop the this this thing where our people are going to go from worshiping the white man to worshiping the Chinese man. And everyone keeps some people say facts, then some people say you're talking BS. But look at the guy, the engineer. Well, who made up the term engineer? A white man did. Your whole identity is wrapped up in a title that a white man bestowed upon you. And you're going to tell me I'm talking BS? How many lawyers and doctors and engineers are in Africa walking around with no money in their pockets? I employ a dude who's an engineer. He has a, he has a degree in engineering, 
but he works for me. His whole life was spent to go reach that, that level, but it didn't pay him. It didn't pay off because the white man can give you the, you guys honor white given titles more than you, 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 uh, you honor self reliability and sustainability and accountability. Not all Africans, but the ones who fear us going back. That, that That's those people. They don't want nobody to go do what they wouldn't do where they came from because then it shows that they really didn't want nothing more than to leave. And if you don't believe me, we could talk to the three Kenyan engineers that live here. Well, they live in Vegas now who I send their family money in Kenya because they refuse to. So tell me that it's all about us bringing the white mindset. We got more of an African mindset than Africa. A lot of us than Africans do because being Africa ain't just a geog African ain't just a geographical location. Like Dr. Amos Wilson said, it's a mindset. You got to restore that African mindset. And a lot of Africans, even on the continent, don't have an African mindset. All right. So we're going to open up the lines. People are saying they want to call in. No problem. Send me an email again. Here are the instructions. Dinus, they um, can't be they can't be going on forever. They gotta we gotta get a timer or something. Okay, I, no, I got it. I, I'll definitely do a better job moderating. So guys, know, send me an email. Email me is in the email is in the chat room. Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. Uhuru at search for uhuru.com. Send me an email and I will send you the link. And guys, make sure you hit that like button. Again, make sure you hit that like button, okay? We have almost 400 people watching. We need you to hit that like button, everybody. And then if you want to call in, send me an email, who at searchforhoover.com. I'll send you the link, and you could come on and challenge Brandon. All right. <laughs> I need to. It's on that food. Hey, Dinah, somebody asked me, do I have the African mindset? I think I do. I, I mean, Dinah, it's me and you talk off offline do do you think that i'm a person who says one thing when the camera's on and then lives a different way no I'm, that's not me that's I not i definitely i definitely believe your public persona is your private persona that is my persona i don't change for nobody and i believe in the black family i believe in having african babies i believe in uh, african people loving each other and having children together i believe that Building Africa is the primary goal, right? It's not all this, oh, I'm going to go to Germany first, marry a white woman, and then come back and build my village up. I don't believe in that, you know? And I've even told people that here, and, it, you know, it's cost me some friends, but I don't care. I'm B1. I'm as B1 as it gets. I don't, I support people who got something to support. How many African engineers, doctors, lawyers on here ain't even bought Dinah's book? Ain't even purchase a T-shirt, won't sign up to Patreon, even though you come every day to drink from the well because you you recognize that the brother is real and authentic, but your your Eurocentric programming won't allow you to support this dude monetarily. But like it's like this one dude. <clears throat> Why are you speaking the white man's man? I you know my Swahili is not good enough to like articulate all these thoughts, right? But you will see me in the comments. And even on my channel, talking Swahili to people who are speaking Swahili to me in the comments. Like, I don't know if you've noticed that, Dinus. You'll see me type stuff in Swahili to like Atticus, Daniel. If you speak to me in Swahili, I'll speak back. You know, I, I'm, I'm not that good to like be initiating conversations. But maybe I'm speaking a white man's language because you guys don't make a good enough effort to teach us African languages. If I want to learn... Uh, if I want to learn an African language in Los Angeles, California, Dinus, if I want to take Swahili lessons, I can't go learn that from a Kenyan, even though there's millions of them. Well, you know what? Hold on. Actually, let me correct you. I was taking Swahili for a brief amount of time, like maybe a month or two. There's the Beverly Hills Language Institute. That's what I'm saying. Lang I was going to say that. The Beverly Hills Language Institute, but that's a in Beverly Hills, one, and... Maybe there's a Kenyan person teach you Swahili, but with all the Kenyans between here and Beverly Hills, Dinus, that's an hour drive from right. Long Beach to Beverly Hills. True, true. You got tons of Kenyans, Tanzanians, even Congolese who speak Swahili. 
Why haven't they started something where they could teach their people the, the Swahili language? There's a lady who owns a shop in my uh, city called Moonbees Designs. I go to her. She does help me with certain things, but she's a busy woman. She's a lawyer, but she does help me. But I'm making an effort to do that. Now, if you guys create something, there's nothing stopping an African person from creating a language center. Every, but this is the reality. You guys don't see the importance of that because unless it's handed down from the white man, it doesn't have any value. You guys could build empires off of just teaching black people, African people in the diaspora, African languages. But no, you don't do that. There's African diasporans who are going into Africa who are setting up centers to teach African language. When you got a bunch of Africans who, who live there, who know the language, speak good English, who don't want to set it up. Dinah, am I telling the truth or am I lying? Yeah, you're telling the truth. Okay, so don't tell me. Don't, I, don't, you can't question me because I'm putting my money where my mouth is. You put your money where the white man is. I'm married to a black woman with a black baby. You have a white, these guys can't wait to get a white wife. You want to marry Karen, bro, and have little mulatto babies running around and then go give your family members crumbs while you pay for this big, ridiculous looking whatever she is to get her body done and to get her toes done. Like, there's no way, bro. There's no way. There's no way I see the African dude who goes to my wife's uh, spa who pays for his, his wife to get a facial and a wax and all this stuff, and he's paying like four or five hundred bucks. But I know there's somebody back in a village in Africa where he's from who ain't even got enough food. There's no way you're going to be able to explain that to me, guys. Make sure you hit that like button. And people keep asking, Dinah, where can I get a book at? So let me walk you guys through this. All right, all right, let me go ahead and share the screen. I'm going to walk you guys through the dynastymirror.com site. Uh, <laughs> give me one. No, no, for real, for real, for real. I'm just going to I'm going to walk everybody through. This is a tutorial. You know, because I really would appreciate your guys' support. Again, if you're watching this, all right, there's, like I said, there's 82,000 of you. Again, there's 82,000 of you. So you guys should have, every one of you should have a book or have something. You know, hold on one second. Let me blow this up. So, guys, this is DynastyMirror.com right here, okay? So you're going to go to DynastyMirror.com, right? You're going to scroll down. So this is the search for a Hulu website. The Ilay and Mirror, that's the clothing line, okay? So that is being worked on right now. It's almost done. But in the time being, uh, this is the Africa Personify Foundation, the nonprofit. Click on there. This is Africa Personify, which is actually, so all the prints and the photos that you guys see me taking in Africa, um, that is going to, this site is going to be pretty much, this site is no, no longer going to, going to exist here in probably a week. And it's going to go, merge into the Ile Amir, um, houses of House of Amir site, okay? So here, here's the shop. So right now, if you guys wanna buy shirts, you click on this shop button, okay? When you scroll down, right now, this is the temporary Ile Amir site, and then you go on here and you can buy your shirts, everybody, okay? So that's where you go. Everything, you know, the headquarters is Dynasty Amir. It's like, basically, guys, Dynasty Amir is like LVMH, right? And then under LVMH, you got Louis Vuitton, you got Moet, you got all these other brands. So Dynasty Mir is the, the 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 mothership. There we go. It's the you know it's the umbrella company. It's the is the LVMH. So everything is going to be under Dynasty Mir. The real estate Hollis and Mir is coming. I mean everything is coming. And then as far as the uh, books go to Nor Norisma, okay. That's the site. That's that site is coming soon as well. But right now, so Norisma, that's going to be uh, uh, the media. So like search for who, what you're watching right now, my books, uh, you know, all that is going to be under Noir Norisma. OK, if I'm mispronouncing that, guys, I'm sorry. It's French. I'm working on it. So but there's a special meaning behind that. So if you want to buy your books, you click shop. OK, and it takes you to my Amazon. All right. It takes you to my Amazon. So then you come on here. You can buy the books. 
Uh, you can buy the uh, the print editions. These are Kindle, but the print ones are right here. All formats, paperback, Kindle edition. So here you go. So this is how you buy the products. This is how you support Dynasty Mirror, you guys. That's how you do it. Okay, I hope I hope I made that plain and made that simple for you guys. If you have any questions, by all means, just ask or uh, send me an email. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll hey. You about to get a whooping now. All right, Black Ambassador, go ahead, brother. What's going on? What's going on, Kings? So I, I, and peace, peace. And I'm going to come through, man. And, you know, we had this conversation, and I want to give a disclaimer real quick. That some, 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 please read the title. It says some Africans. Not all. It doesn't apply to everybody. But I think it's very important and it's vital that we highlight this small group and this small demographic of individuals. Because why? Because after the actual interaction between Africans and throughout the diaspora and back on the continent, we need to be able to identify and neutralize those individuals that will agitate for divide and be deceptive about our new communication and our new interactions and the unity that we have. You feel what I'm saying? We have to be able to understand that those individuals who sit somewhere outside of their country and talk about, well, we're going to, you know, have a marker for how many Africans can come back from the diaspora because I think it technically is more strategic. We don't need to hear none of that. We need to be able to identify those individuals because as Brandon already said, what did you say, Brandon? You get nothing but love when you come back to the continent, right? Oh, yeah, nothing but love. From the real people, from the real people who are there situated there in the trenches and living life and living in the continent. So we have to be able to identify those other individuals who are coming and then, like I said, inserting themselves into our conversations and inserting themselves into our unity and causing frustration and causing divisions and restrictions and limitations and all these other things. Be careful of the colonizer African from the Americas because they might come back and just show me the history of that. So see, the conversation gets detracted. People start feeling some certain type of way, right? And we're going into a whole different direction. When we were coming back talking about taking over industries that weren't taken over by us in the first place, from outsiders in the first place, from foreigners in the first place. So this is why it's vital for us to have this conversation. This is why it's vital for us to be able to identify those small few so what? We can mitigate and neutralize those individuals for the actual relationship in which we're trying to build and the actual connection that we're trying to have back to the continent and an actual change that we're trying to make that is fundamentally vastly different than anything that they were ever doing in the first place. See, I'm tired of the roost of we went to the West to go learn. It's 2020. You can learn online and nothing in the West is new. Infrastructure is not new in the West. It's old. What are you learning? Please tell me. What are you learning that fundamentally cannot be achieved from the continent that is vastly different in the United States of America or anywhere else in the UK? You've seen what they did. What are you talking about? You want to talk about the medical field? You've seen how they caught bodies during this virus? They didn't know how to react. They didn't know how to respond. So why are you going there to learn about that? What else? Manufacturing? They don't have that. All that's done in China. Exactly. So where are you going? Where are you going in the West, in the UK to learn? What can people who produce tulips, scones, and biscuits going to teach you about what you need to do in Africa with natural, raw, mineral resources and processing them and building an economy around that? So this is the question that you have to ask. Go ahead, Brandon. The, the the like okay, what does a person gain by going to America and become getting a law degree and then going back to Togo with that law degree he got in America? Like, what do you do with that? That's all about going to tell somebody, look, Massa said I'm smarter than you, so I get to be, I should get this position over you, right? We want to, like, like uh, I forgot who said it, but it's a bunch of theoretical knowledge. It ain't good for nothing. It's not good for nation building. It's not good for community building. 
It's not good for nothing other than going to work for somebody else. And the place where Africa fails is there's nowhere to work. So you're going to get qualified for a job that's not even there. Or you're going to get in the government because, you know, in Africa, they think, oh, if you got the white man's degree, he must be qualified to lead and rule in Africa. And then you, then you go and you say, look, I get in the government. Now I'm exploiting everybody, taking money and whatnot. And people voted me right up in here because the white man approved. Like, I'm never going to forget that. Robert Mugabe was Sir Robert Mugabe, meaning he was a knight under Queen Elizabeth. There's you know, a reason. In, in fact, Brandon, Robert Mugabe, I think, was the most educated leader ever in history as far as the number of PhDs he had. Yeah, of course, because he was over there with the white man for a long time. And while, and, and, you know, a lot of people glorify Robert Mugabe, and I got nothing bad to say about him. But we don't realize that while we was glorifying this dude, his children were living in Europe, driving $100,000 cars, living in $100,000 apartments, and he had a estate and all that stuff. Why was that guy given rulership over an African nation, right? Even though later on, when he got decrepit and couldn't really do nothing, all of a sudden he has a change of heart. You know, once he's secured his family's generational wealth, he has a change of heart. And now you posted memes about him all on the internet and everything like that. See, that's what our, that's what African migrants do. They, they, they give their best to the white man and then they give you whatever's left, right? That's why the Vladimir Putin talked about Russia being a very, I mean, uh, Africa being a graveyard because African migrants, people who were born in Africa, they leave Africa and give their best to their white wife, their white colleagues, the white company they work for. And then once they old and decrepit, they might go back to Africa. There's a guy who's in my town. He's in Nigeria. He's Nigerian. The guy owns like 40 apartment buildings in my city. He owns land all over Inglewood, L.A., everywhere. The guy has some villages back in Nigeria. But if you talk to him, he's like, I'll never go back to Nigeria. His wife tells him, we need to go back. We need to go back. He's still working. He's still working every day as a as an OBGYN. But he's like 70 years old. So when does he go back to Africa and start something there that's sustainable? His empire is in America. He ain't going back. Hey, let's let's go. All right, let's go. Dan, go ahead, bro. Hey, Don. Hey, man. Can you hear me good? Uh, you're, kind, you're kind of low, but uh, Brandon, can you hear him? All right. Yeah, um, I got him loud All right, cool. Hey, uh, I just I just want to give you all uh, an African perspective because, you know, a whole lot of times, you know, you all speak about Africa, but you don't let the Africans talk about this stuff, man. You all just... Uh, that's not like, true. Uh, I, 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 I yeah. completely disagree. On this platform, that's not true. I, I, I completely disagree. Well, that, this platform well, well. is about building a bridge, so I and, and, well. and creating dialogue. So I, I completely disagree. In fact, you're on here right now, so that that is, right. that debunks what you just said. Go ahead. Well, you know, Brandon, the thing is, though, you know, you came out strong about Africa, man. I had to come back and say, man, I'm in Africa, man. This, you know, you gotta hear this. You gotta hear the perspective from us. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, a whole bunch of stuff that you said, I, I don't quite totally agree with it. Because the uh, thing is, this is a very diverse continent, first of all, right? There's 1.2 billion people over here, man. And so you can't brand us with a white brush and say, hey, this is this is what they're doing. That, that, that ain't true, man. There's, there's more middle class people here than there is in black America. I mean, what's 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 population of Black America? Forty or fifty million? There's a whole lot of rich people here that don't even want to go to America. I mean, then, and then of course, when then we got a whole lot of poor people that want to leave, probably they don't see the opportunity. But but here's an example of an African that was born here, lived in America thirty years. So I just came back, you know, set up my business and all. So, where, where 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 are you in uh, Africa? Where? I'm in Nairobi. No, okay. Right, right. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I like I like to contribute as much as I can. The thing is, you can't paint us all with a white brush, man. I, th th that's just not possible, man. There's people here; they 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 live in large, man. They don't want to go to America because they got the best life that they have over here. Now, like I said, we got a whole bunch of people that that ain't making it. Probably think maybe better off going to Europe or America, and you know, they, they try to leave out of here. 
But that's 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 not the whole general perspective. Because the thing is, you know, when once African Americans uh, interact with Africans, they they're dealing with a certain breed. They ain't dealing with with the whole with the with, with the whole spectrum here. You're dealing with an individual that's left Africa for a specific reason, all right? And and and, and that's the interaction, and that's, and that's the same thing. Once we once we meet African Americans in America, I lived there thirty years, all right. But we build our perception and perspective based on what we interact, based on how we interact. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna say that. I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna say half the stuff that you said was actually true because it's not. It doesn't represent the 1.2 billion people that's on this continent. I mean, granted, yeah, we got a lot of problems. We got a whole lot of screwed up leaders out here that sell outs and all. But the thing is. Elections in Africa are not really elections. They're more they're more selections. And listen, that's the same thing that y'all's going through over there with your election. Right? I mean, first of all, it takes it takes a ton of money to run for an election here. Tons and tons of money. I mean, Kenya, I mean, I'll probably our president spent billions. I mean, I mean, their family's pretty wealthy and all, but they spend billions. And the average guy who's trying to compete in that kind of environment, you gotta have money. All right, and that has that, that that comes with its own different uh, set of rules. All right, and influences. Because then again, you got foreign influences trying to influence these people so that they can bring their investments here, protect their interests, and all. So it's it's not that simple. I mean, sometimes you know if we try and simplify this. It's not it's not that simple at all. I mean, this is just Kenya. Kenya is just a small country. Think about a country like Nigeria. How much would it cost just to run to be a governor? Not just president, a governor. I mean, so it's just like just the very wealthy are in politics, all right. And then it's 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 not that simple. Roger, Roger, Roger. So uh, I definitely want to talk to the issue, and I think this is this, this is a display of. The, let me rephrase. This is a display of us not really understanding what communication and what we're trying to say. Some. Some, some. I don't think Brandon ever at one point said all Africans 1.2 billion want to leave. It said some in the title, and then he even said some in his narrative. So let's re-emphasize that so we can get back on track and not get into conversations about a general 1.2 billion population, which we're not speaking all to. We're speaking to that small entity, like I also said, that we must neutralize, the ones we must identify the ones that are not doing good, as you could see, and as you hear often from the rhetoric of the majority, is that, oh, these individuals sell us out. So we, what are we going to do? We're just going to keep talking about it? Or are we going to be able to identify what that even means and how to neutralize those entities, those individuals, those small groups, which do this to us and spread the division amongst the ones in the diaspora and spread the division amongst the ones that are there in the continent? between the borders and between the actual towns and the actual districts. So these are the ones that we need to specify our attention and our energy on. The ones that do depart from Africa and smuggle what we call billions of dollars of natural resources, get caught at the border trying to smuggle it out to Europe or get caught trying to get back in deals done for things that are supposed to be done. See, these are the things that we need to focus our attention on. We're not talking about generalizing the whole population. Let me just say that again so people can understand. We want to focus our attention on the entities that we hear all the time that individuals say we have a problem with. And we need to focus on our mentality as a general population. There should be no way that a small few sell out 440 million. That is ridiculous. At a certain point, we have to ask ourselves the question, why can he breathe comfortably at this club popping bottles with all the girls with us when he just sold us down the road for about how many years? Damn. We have to ask ourselves that question. Damn. I had to ask myself that question. I had to stop looking at Jesse Jackson. I had to stop looking at Obama. I had to stop looking at all these individual people that was supposed to be, or what I was thinking was supposed to be some leader, some politician, some idea. And it was me. It was me. Ain't nobody giving me nothing to come to Africa. Ain't nobody giving me no 
program. Obama didn't give me, hey, a black ambassador. I'm about to give you eight billion dollars to go back to Africa. And we're about to help you out. It doesn't exist. I had to take control of my own destiny. And this is specifically what we want to focus the attention on the people, the majority in which you were talking about, brother. And then focus the attention on those entities, those individuals, which you also talk about so much. The ones who want to run away, the ones who want to smuggle us out and smuggle our resources, our time and our energy and our, and, and our, and our future away. So let's focus our attention on that. And I think if we spoke about that, the sum, the sum, the small minority, the small group, if we neutralize them and then we turn ourselves into those people I just described, Africa is the future, rebrand ourselves, empower ourselves, speak life into existence of each other, we'll be great. Can, can I ask a question to you, Dan? Can I ask Dan a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Dan, first I want to ask you, what tribe are you from, Dan? Do you mind let me ask you that? All right. Before I answer that, I'm just going to say one thing, right? Um, Boy, Africans always got a, a, a disclaimer. Boy, they can't, they uh, can't never answer a question with one word. I promise to God, y'all can't just answer the question. No, it's, 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 it's because it's not that simple. I mean, oh. I, understand, I, I understand where, where you go with okay, this. Okay, you're who you. We already know. Okay, anyway. So I already know what tribe you're from. It doesn't matter. So... <laughs> <laughs> we gonna stop the foolishness. But this is what I'm telling you. Let me ask you a question, though. So, uh, tell me this: Chinese uh, people say you in Africa, right? Africans I am in been, Africa. I, I know, but Africans been leaving Africa for God knows how long. There's no opportunity. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing there for us, and that's the it's ultimate the argument, right? Then you see Chinese people, right? Little short. Slanty eye, little, you know, wash feet and whatever. They go to Africa, the place where Africans said there's no opportunity. And all of a sudden, they're creating opportunity. All these African people throughout the globe who got all these high positions, I'm talking about they engineers, they doctors, they lawyers, they chemists, they scientists. I always say Africans don't go to school for no liberal arts degree. They go to school for that mathematics, all the high stuff, right? I commend them on that. But the Chinese guy who only makes Chinese food can go to this place in Africa and find an opportunity where the African who's a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer who left, who went and married a white woman over in the UK or America, couldn't find that same opportunity where he's from where he has a whole community supporting him, right? Very and very then, very when the, wait, then when the African goes and shows him, the king, the uh, Chinese man goes and shows him that there's opportunity there, does he get on the first thing spoken and get back over there so he can go compete with them in his homeland to get the contracts and all that to build the things that he went to school to learn how to create? Why doesn't he do that, Dan? Why isn't there a mass exodus of African immigrants headed back to Africa now that the Chinese have showed them that they were wrong, there really is opportunity here? Why aren't they on their way back on the plains? Why are the Nigerians crying when Trump, bless his soul, put their butts back on the train, I mean the plane, and send them back? Tell me why they're not doing that, Dan, since it's all about... A lot of Africans over there really don't want to come to America, and there's a bigger no. middle class over there than over here. Brand, brand, look, we got a whole lot of airlines flying to you. Hey, hey, Dan, Dan, you're, Dan, you're echoing. You're echoing. Awesome. And my TV's off, so uh, let's listen. Go ahead, go ahead. And 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 then, and then uh, after after the response, we're gonna get the next caller on here. But go ahead, Dan. Brand, we got a whole lot of airlines flying into the United States. We got Ethiopian, we got Kenyan, we got South African, and all these flights, man, they ain't coming back empty, man. They're coming back full. You probably hardly get a seat on them on them flights. Oh, Dan, so Dan, I gotta interject, Dan, 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 Dan. I gotta interject with you right now. You know who's on those flights? Chinese white people, white folks, white people, yeah, white white folks. Oh man, those flights, especially the East Africa. Oh my white God, folks! Why? So many white people. White people. I was shocked. 
Listen. Like when I fly, I give you the prime example. When I fly Ethiopian Airlines, so Ethiopian Airlines, you can fly from uh, Newark, New Jersey to Lome, Togo, then Lome, Togo to Addis Ababa. Like literally, when I land in Lome, Togo, all the black folks get off the plane, all the white folks are still on. No, South no, African no, Airways, you can fly from no, DC. No, no. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm going to give it to you. You can fly from D.C. to uh, Accra, or you can go to uh, Dakar, Senegal. Like, literally. And then they go from there to Johannesburg. Literally. You get off, like, all the black folk get off the plane. All the white people stay on. So, it's white folks on these planes. But go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Well, the thing is, I'm not going to argue about manifest on passengers and all. But I know the few times that I've flown, there's a whole lot of people. The African flying back home to do a whole lot of different things. Some are coming here to build homes. Some are coming up here to start businesses. Like some come out here to see family. So the whole idea that the Africans are like, just going to the U.S. and they're not coming back home, it's not, it's not really true, man. There's a whole lot of investments here. I'm talking about apartment buildings, businesses, all kinds of stuff. People doing that live in the U.S. that are actually doing it. To, you know, doing over here in Africa, all right? And uh, how long? Technically, how long has this been going on? Well, it's it's been going on for I guess the last decade or so. Oh, just for like the last ten years? Yeah, I, I'd okay. say that. I'd I say just that. I just want the answer to the question: Why isn't there a max mass exodus of Africans who are throughout the African immigrants? All the dudes who like to go to UK. And marry uh, Karen and the dudes in America who marry. No, they don't marry why, Karen. Why aren't man. they? Why aren't they you going back home? Too, man. What? What you say? You married to a white woman too? They they marrying sisters too, man. They they ain't just marrying Karens. Listen, I'm not talking about the ones who marry sisters. I'm talking about the majority who marry Karens. And the thing is, why aren't they headed back to? Uh, bro, listen. With the opportunities that are in, in Nigeria, there should be no Nigerian in America. Who doesn't have a plan to go back to Nigeria and get a piece of that pie? You got, they got Africans got just as much capital in America or more than the average African American. Why is it? Uh, why are we the only ones looking back at Africa, saying go over there and create this and create that? Now there are some African immigrants doing that, but we're the only ones getting on the internet talking about it publicly. We're the one you're listen, realize something. You're on an African American platform right now. You're on an African American platform. Wait, There's a I reason with three African Americans talking about this. Now go to the African platform that's gonna bring on African Americans to talk about building in Africa and not talking, doing it. I want to. I want to get another caller on here, but uh, Dan, if you could answer the question, and then let me get uh, another caller on here. All right. Thing is, there is brain drain. Brain drain's been happening in this continent since the '60s, right? People come out here since the '60s. But since don't the, don't. I'm about to say, don't forget about 200 million Africans being shipped across the Atlantic too. That might have been a brain drain too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, there we go. How about we highlight something monumental like that? But go ahead. But I do, I do apologize. I should have done that. But thing is, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. No, no, we good, we good, we good, we good. It's all right. It's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> thing is, uh, I would say here in in the last 10, 15 years, a whole lot of Africans are coming back. Now, you asked me something about the Chinese, but you made it such a long question that I actually actually forgot the question. What what was the question about the Chinese? Nah, it's too late. You gotta learn to keep up. You just told me after you were smart. But hey, but hey, let, let, hey, Dan, let me let me get somebody else on here, everybody. But Dan, hey, brother, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Dan. Thank thanks, you. brother. All right, Dan. All right, all right take care. Willie Fungo with the sheet. Hey, can you hear all me? All right, Willie, go ahead. Yeah, we got you, Will. All right. So, from a Nigerian American perspective, I don't know why y'all even take these guys seriously. I mean, they're just, I guess they feel threatened by black Americans and they think you're going to, you know, compete with them and they're scared of competition. But I mean, that's the same thing they say about um, Nigerians who go to Kenya or South Africa. They think we're a threat. And th those are really not people you should be taking seriously. That's just my opinion on it. Um, as far as what 
uh, Africans in the diaspora do. Um, in Nigeria in particular, I know that we send back 25 billion every year, which would be the equivalent of $650. Like if every African American put up $650 every single year, that would be 25 billion. That's a massive amount of money. And so um, if you look at our earning potential in America compared to in Nigeria, you know, we're making 500 times as much. I don't even know what a doctor makes in Nigeria, probably less than $300 a month. That same doctor in the U.S. can make $150,000, $160,000, $200,000 a yeah. year. So, I mean, the economics of it is obviously you go to where um, they're paying. And... No, I uh, got that. Yeah. As far but as, like... Why I was asking you a question. Why do you think those Nigerians actually send that money back? Um, they're just taking care of family. It's too bad it's not going towards investment. It's going towards consumption. So we send the money back to the people over there. They use it to import stuff like food, clothes, cars, uh, bullshit. You know, I, I disagree, really. I think a lot of that, that money being remitted is glorified aid, if you ask me. What do you mean by that? Uh, I think it's sent back to, to take care of family members back home. The same, the same yeah. way. That's what he said. Where, 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 yeah, oh, he said right, he right. about yeah. import something. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's it's unfortunate. No, he said they were consumed with it for investment. That's why it's not having as big as, of an impact as it should be having. Because 25 okay. billion, that's that's enough to develop the country, honestly, every single year. But the money is not being used to let's say, develop farmland or build factories. It's being used for consumption. That's the problem. And that's really a cultural problem. Um, we can't really blame anyone but ourselves for that. Yeah, but, yeah, um, but you, I, would like to, I would like to add, see, that's the good part. You know, they send money back and they're going to take care of family. And like you said, with Black America, we could look at what you just said, right? Who are we sending it back to in Africa, right? We don't have any family there and we have to build those and we have to build tangibles between the two so that there will be a connection there and then therefore there will be an avenue for us to actually pump that money into and funnel that money into as it stands right now we well, have to me, create let me, it let me, let me, somebody, somebody let me just so all your yeah. topics the uh divisive or decisive what, hold on let me read this the 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 divisive listen i do a more every morning i do a no hold on stop the show Every morning, I do a morning motivational video. Every morning, I get maybe 300 to 200 views. That's it, 200 to 300 views. I do a morning motivational video. Every morning, I get maybe 300 views. So I can't help that you focus on topics like this, which isn't divisive at all. It's just a conversation. And we, you know, and we gave the disclaimer some. Again, some like Black Ambassador said. Some. Yeah, yeah. So again, I you know just again every morning, I do a morning motivational video every morning, every day, except for maybe Saturdays. I, I not on Saturdays. I get only like two hundred views. But then here, you want to come on here and say, Dinah, all your topics, the devi topics, the vice. And then me and Fitzgerald Stevens are on. Fitzgerald Stevens, we come on. If Fitzgerald kicks knowledge and facts and drop jewels on every show, all positivity. So stop it. All right, go ahead. Sorry about that. I just have to introduce Yeah, Sorry. yeah, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, and then also, too, just to add on what you said, we're trying to actually identify divisive entities and neutralize them. That's what we talked about this whole conversation. So let's 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 go back to what we were really talking about. But yeah, we need to actually build those avenues. Like Dinah's show, I think it speaks to the nature of what he was just saying. He's like one of the first, or from what I know at least, um, so that the masses can see an individual who went back, reconnected, established a very rich connection too in Nigeria, and then also potentially in Sierra Leone, if I'm correct, right, Dinah? So. Uh, the, these are the beginnings of our interaction and us building on a different level or in a different way. So I think it's uh, something that we need to build. So like we said, we can't have it before, though. That doesn't make sense, right? 
how can people just like, oh, African Americans just spend money and send it back to Africa? Like, you know, we, we got to build our connection. We got to make those avenues happen. We got to build out a program. We got to build organization and we got to build a relationship and we got to build on that. And we were just wanted to identify in this conversation in the stream, those individuals which tried to stop us. But for the vast majority of it, then it's nothing but love, like Brandon said. And we need to work together, collaborate together, and then build that road and build that bridge because we work so hard to build it with so many others and we don't with each other. And I think we need to focus on that more and, and, and emphasize on that more. And then we can get way further than where we were prior that, like the brother said, 10 years ago. I also want to note that when it comes to the money we send back, a lot of that is in the real estate sector. So we, we send money back uh, for relatives to buy land or to build a house. That's, that's a huge portion of the money. So that, in a way, is investment. Um, if you look at cities like Abuja, for example, like the, the houses they're building are just um, just massive. And that's that's where that money is going. Um, any major city in Nigeria, you, you'll see like uh, $15 million houses just rows and rows of them. So that's that's where a lot of it is going. Um, I, I uh, wish Willie, Willie, let me say this. See, it, I understand totally what you're talking about. Uh about you know sending money back home. Bring me that charger then. Uh I, I understand totally what you're talking about with the money sent back because I have friends who send money back, and a lot of them do send money back to try to start businesses, and a lot of them actually end up getting scammed by their own family members, right? Yeah. I have a friend who sent hundreds of thousands of dollars back to Nigeria. And he has family members over there lying, telling them they're taking care of different businesses and stuff, and they're not. And that's what I'm, and this is the point I'm trying to make besides going through all that other stuff. Africa is a place where when you do things, you're going to have to operate while being there in, in person. You got to be there in person, right? And then when you're there in person, you have to do like most business people do. You have to stop with the nepotism crap, the cronyism crap, where you hire your brother to run your business because he's your brother, right? Because he didn't scam you a hundred times. And you have to find people who are qualified to run the business. One of the reasons why the business that I run is successful is because I'm not practicing cronyism. I'm practicing if you don't do right, your ass is going to get fired, right? So a lot of times people can't get one of the advantages i believe african di diasporans have when they go back to africa is that they don't have those same family ties that kind of obligate or hold africans hostage to their families when it comes to trying to make progress or build economic wealth why the hell would someone build a 15 million dollar house in a country where the unemployment is 75 percent you see what i'm saying it makes no sense and what you realize is black people going to do black people type ish everywhere they go. Because if yeah. you go to yeah, the houses are nice. But that guy who built that house, he's taking care of his family. But he got a bunch of other people in his same tribe that he swears that he cares so much about that don't even got enough to eat. I always say this about Kenya. How is Uhuru Kenyatta a, a Kikuyu? And he's the president and a billionaire. But you got Kikuyu kids on the street begging me for one shilling when I walk through the city center. See what I'm saying? So what you under what you realize quickly is it's all rooted in hypocrisy. Africans who are immigrants into other countries, they don't see the value in Africa. They send money back just to take care of theirs, and they don't send enough. Really, a lot of them don't send enough to actually build nothing. But when we say, you know what, we're not just going to go and send the money because a lot of times the money is just a way of saying, OK, look, I sent you money. Now I don't have to deal with you no more. Don't don't complain and call me about your problems. Right. They do that. They hand out money. But we're the ones who say, you know what, we're going to take it on ourselves to go there physically and do the work that those guys don't want to do. You know, those a lot of they, a lot of them don't want to leave the white man. Go get on the ground in their own country and build from the bottom up. They want to just try to get a band-aid on the situation 
by sending money. You see the Lebanese that's taking over Legos? They're, they're physical. Nah, they ain't, they ain't taking over Legos. Oh, that's, that's, what that's what they say. That's what they, they say. Nah, they ain't nah, taking over Legos. They ain't taking over Legos. Okay, nah. they're not taking over Legos. But the Lebanese who are in Legos, they got their own little communities. They're physically there. The, the daddy who got the millions is physically in Legos. He's physically in Africa. Well, this family over in this area is has a a, a, head, a patriarch who got the money, but he's in America. He's the he's the damn near the chief, but he's in America. He has to physically transplant himself back into Africa, so he not only can give the money, but he can oversee what's being done with the money, and you can truly start to build and make progress. It's too. Uh, many- I mean, are you under the impression? That oh, 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 one second, uh, Willie. What we'll do? Go ahead and respond, and then I gotta. I'm gonna let the next caller on here. And guys, hit that like button. We have almost 700 people watching. Guys, hit that like button again. Hit the like button. Goodness, hit the okay. like button, and also make sure you go to dynastymere.com and grab your books and grab your gear, your Nelia. Again, we have almost 700 people watching. Please hit that like button. Willie, go ahead and respond, and I'm gonna get African Millennial on here. Go ahead. Okay, so on the first part, I agree with you. We have a very low trust society. People are scamming too much. We can't trust each other to do basic, uh, small scale business. I, I agree with you on that part. But um, Africa's problem is more of a macro level thing. It's not individuals are, are are opening businesses. I mean, if I talk about Nigeria, you know, we are. I mean, we are. Yeah, putting our money where our mouth is. We're in South Africa, Kenya, Liberia, but African Americans seem to just be talking about it, not actually doing it. Yeah, and I, 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 I know that that's a general. No, I hear you on that one. I hear you on that one. Let me say this. Let me say this. If you guys don't like my Nigerian information, please understand that it comes from Nigerians who have migrated to America, and they've told me these things, and then I say it. So if you have an issue with what I'm saying about Nigeria, now you understand why a lot of African Americans don't okay. want to go there because they're getting their information from the same but, place I'm getting my information. So talk but, to your Nigerian brethren over in America and say, stop lying but, to the older African Americans, making them think I, that the Lebanese is taking over. Hey, Don, hey, Don, Don, I like a question real quick. Hey, hold on, but let me. Uh, but I, got, I want to get the next caller on, but okay. Uh, Willie, brother, uh, go ahead and close out. Willie. I yeah, okay, let me just say one last thing. Nigerian Cement Company has built factories in about 10 right. different African countries. Um, and Nigerian banks are in many different African oh, countries. Man, Nigerian banks are just about in every African country. I, I definitely... Yeah. But yeah. those are, but African Americans, I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing it. I, I see a lot of talk, and for some reason, some Africans are getting threatened by that. But I mean, I don't see it as a threat because I'm not seeing anything. I'm just. Well, aren't you African American? Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a Nigerian American, so I was born here in the U.S. Yeah. I, no, I, but I hear you. I hear you. That's a valid argument. But <laughs> Willie, really, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Thank you, Willie. Thank you for calling in, brother. All right. A lot of, a lot well, of every day, every day, Wait, B. A. <laughs> every day, African tigers got people on who in Africa doing business who are African American. So I don't I push back against that assertion. Okay. African millennial, go ahead. African millennial, go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, um I agree with most of what you said and it definitely shows how um, a lot of continental Africans in the comment section I've been I've been reading it. It's so lit, but a lot of them are really upset because there is just a lack of accountability on a lot of continental Africans. And this is speaking from one. So if you want to come for me, please come for me. No problem. Um, when I speak about things like automatic citizenship, for, for example, a lot of them say, well, automatic citizenship, they don't deserve it, yada, yada, yada. And I think it comes from a fact of jealousy because um, Let's just use an example. Um, I don't know if everyone's Christian in here, but let's use the story of the prodigal son. What happened when the lost son came back home? The other he, son he, that he was gained, he gained the, the birthright, right? Or, yeah. The other son that was home the whole time was jealous. They were upset because wait, why are you getting all this praise? Why why is why is there a party for you? Like, why is all of this happening? So I think it's a matter of a lot of Africans are jealous because um, some of them have been 
back home for 20, 30 years. And then they're thinking of people coming back and doing things in like two, three, four, five years or whenever they actually get their citizenships. And they're like, dang, I couldn't do that my whole life. So I think it definitely is a matter of jealousy and a lot of Africans need to humble themselves because um, a lot of Africans, especially who leave, see the glass half empty instead of the glass half full. So they already can be on here talking about how Bwari is this, Bwari is that, Bwari is this, Bwari is that. But they're thinking that coming to uh, the West is going to change their situation. Uh, they think that all they need to do is bring money back home, build a house when they retire at the age of 60, and that's them doing something to help their society. So I definitely think it's a mindset that a lot of Africans back home just need to change. It's not even anyone else's issue. It's the problem that they have within themselves. And if they don't even believe that South Africa, Ghana, whatever can be great, then what do you expect other people who are coming back to do? Like. It's just something that a lot of them cost from themselves. But I will say this, there was a panelist who a couple of days ago, uh, he did say that it was the diaspora's job to basically save Africa. So I'm guessing that there have been some people who've said things like that. And that's one of the reasons why, um, on the other hand, that there is some pushback because when he said that, um, you know, that was kind of, that was kind of rude, you know? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Let me, let me, let me, let me at least defend the prodigal son story for a second. The oh son, my in the prodigal son, the sons who were jealous, right? At least they stayed on the father's land and did the work, right? They stayed at the farm when the one left. We getting hated on by people who also left the damn farm, trying to hate on us going back, right? Like, like I said, like I said, it's, 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 Real right. crazy part, like they left too. They're like prodigal sons too. They took off, but now we like, yo, we gonna go back, right? And of course, we we got taken away. We didn't leave, but yeah. we, we going back. It's like they don't want to go into Africa, but they want to stand in the damn doorway and make sure the people want to go in don't get to go in, right? So that's that shows you that there's a level of hypocrisy, and I really believe that beyond jealousy. It's just a it's a level of self hate that's involved to where they don't mind the Chinese or whatever going in doing it, but they just don't want you to do it, right? And and that speaks to this self hate that I think permeates in a lot of African people who leave the continent. Like self hate was their driving force to get off the continent, and then once they got where they wanted to be, they were like, not only do I not want to go back. These African Americans are crazy as hell to try to go back and do something with that place. I've already deemed that place unsuitable to do anything, and if they try to go back, it's like they take offense to that, right? Oh. So it's a lot of it's a lot of jealousy, but it's also a lot of self hate, and it's a lot of uh, 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 self doubt. It's a lot of self doubt. So really, we just gonna have to take a, a mindset of look, either you go with us or you not, and if you well, standing in between us and what we want, we gonna just go back, go through you and do what we got to do regardless. And I want to add, uh, you know, the reason I wanted us to have the conversation again is to highlight that small minimum group because we want to neutralize and mitigate the threat that they oppose, which is publishing, distributing a negative relationship with us. We are trying to focus on the positive. We're trying to build and empower each other. I don't know what the actual reason is they are like X, Y, and Z, but I do know the end result, ineffective African relationship. And this is what we're trying to neutralize, whether it be an African in black skin, or whether it be an individual from a different nation in a different country from a different continent. We need to be able to identify someone who's amongst our ranks, bringing up points that are not valid, that are not valid historically, that are not valid presently. And all it seeks to do is divide divide and conquer so we have to be able to identify it and this is why we're having a conversation and it's vital for us to have this conversation so that we can ensure this doesn't happen again we don't need this we don't need that at all we don't need that energy we don't need those people around we need to focus on building them with each other and building for africa and by africa africans that are coming from america at least me 
and at least Brandon and at least Dinah. You have seen the work right before your eyes, right? And then also on top of that, we're going to require the Africans that are there that appreciate us, appreciate the, re the, the relationship, the family, the love to actually be able to take a stand and stand up also. Because what? We have to go against forces that are going to go against this unity that we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. Some, somebody in the comments said Africans don't leave the continent because of self-hate. They leave because uh, there's no opportunity. Didn't we just say how Wait, to that, that that, that's cool. All right. They leave for, because there's no opportunity. There's none. There wasn't one. There's none around. It doesn't exist. Roger that. Let them leave and let them go on to their own destiny, thinking that there's going to be an opportunity in America. Our ancestors thought that for 600 years. And I'll tell you, the end result is still very low on the ownership of the pie of America. But what I'm actually wanting us to focus on is not people who leave, not people who are sellouts. The sellout is supposed to do what he's supposed to do. So what are you supposed to do? Because if you're getting beat by a sellout, if you're getting conquered by someone who's not a true African, who's corrupt, then you the lame. You taking L's from a corrupted individual. You taking L's from somebody who's a puppet. He ain't even a real man. He ain't even the real go-to guy. He ain't got one bank. <laughs> He ain't got one gun manufacturing plant. He ain't got one nothing, nada, nothing. He's a puppet. He's weak. So what? We're supposed to focus on us. The ones that say, I'm going to go back to Africa in Nigeria and create this type of connection that's rich, that a village actually sees him as their own. And another individual like Brandon, who says, I'm going to take my energy and go to Kenya. He's a mass. Well, I'm going to say that. he's a big brother of Kenya <laughs> with his brothers and sisters. He's doing great work there and they love him there and they respect him there. This is what we need to focus on, not the entities that the sum that causes division. I just want to make sure that we know those some are just haters. They playing their role. We're going to play ours. Uh, guys, hit that like button. We got 718 people watching. Please hit that like button. If you have not hit the like button, you're trifling. Hit that like button, okay? Uh, Black Opal, go ahead. Black Opal. Black Opal. Yes. Yes, sorry, I'm on. Um, well, don't come for me, y'all, but I've found that a lot of West Africans... Not I'm all, coming for you. <laughs> don't come for me, but not all. But I feel like more West Africans... Africans tend to like come here like for example I've personally never seen any East African or any Kenyan who was rich in Kenya come to America to live I've just never Bye. seen that most of us who come here are like the poor ones who were poor in Kenya and came here for opportunity and then we're sending money back my family in Kenya who's living well in Kenya would never want to come live here they'll come to visit but they'll even tell you why would I come there like I'm set in Kenya Rich Kenyans go to the UK. But let me finish, please. Um, I see I've met a lot of West Africans who were rich in West Africa, who even owned businesses, who left all that to come here. And they come and they're like working. Now, that's not always true, but they come here sometimes working in jobs or some of them still come here and still get to that high stance in life. But I've met a lot who don't want to go back. Now, for me, with Kenyans, I haven't seen a lot of Kenyans who want to stay here. Most of the Kenyans I know come here, do their thing, and retire, like, and they're begging to leave. But I do see that a lot in West Africans. We're now, not about to say no East Coast, West Coast, African, African. Please, can I finish? You start, you, you're you doing something where you're comparing. African, West, right, 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 right. Let, let her finish, let her finish, Brandon. Let her finish. Okay, oh, my finish God. Up. Nothing you said is now, based in fact. For us who are immigrants, we do have kind of like, it's different for us because we have family back. Most people who are immigrating, they have responsibilities back. So it's hard to juggle both and you try to send money back because it's hard to, okay, you're working here, saving money, sending it back, and then going back to, um, to Kenya to build or whatever. So we do send money, which usually doesn't work out. So I and you did mention that too, Brendan, which at least you understood that aspect. But I do feel like black people, we tend to have this kind of thing where we're more comfortable with other races 
like succeeding over us. But when you see another black person be more successful than you, you feel weird. It's like, why does that black yes. person, you know, it's weird. Cause I, I see that even in the workplace where like, if a non-black person achieves over another black person, they feel like, okay, that makes sense. But if it, it's another fellow black person achieving over them, it's like they feel threatened. And you see that even within the continent, when you see other African groups migrate to other African countries, for example, Kenyans, I mean, Nigerians in Kenya. I've heard from family members and other people, even if you watch Wode Maya's channel, where you'll see like, they're not, if you're traveling with the African passport, you get worse treatment than if you're traveling with an American passport, even if you're a black person. So I, for I agree. example, Chinese American that. passport could kind of probably travel a little bit better than if he had like a Nigerian passport or whatever, because there is that threat. And I even asked my brother, I was like, what's your, what's your problem with like the Nigerians? And he was like, oh, well, they're coming here to take jobs. I'm like, how can they take a hold job? Hold on, Black, 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 they're, 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 they're Black, 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 you know, Nigeria is like one of the Nigerians, like some of the biggest employers now in Kenya. Because, you know, we own, we have, like, we have, I think UBA is now in Nigeria. I think um, there was like a huge, uh, one that, of the Nigerian banks, Niger, one of the Nigerian, another Nigerian bank just acquired a huge, I think it's, uh, what bank is it? One of the FNB or one of the banks just acquired one of the, one of the Kenya's largest banks. That is, that's what to them even creating a business to them that's you taking away the opportunity and i'm telling him i'm like you should be happy first of all i'm like well everybody else coming in there and making creating jobs and treating y'all like shit. i'm like i'd rather my nigerian brother come in there open a business and hire us than me work for a damn indian but to them even you creating opportunity for them because you're a black person and they're not doing it they feel threatened and I get, I mean, I always tell them, I'm like, I mean, what are immigrants coming in there doing that you can't do? You should, if you, don't be mad at the immigrant who's coming there to see the benefits you have or to see the opportunity. Don't be mad at him. Be mad at yourself that you couldn't do it. But it's that jealousy. So, and it's kind of the same jealousy here where some black Americans, when they see black immigrants achieve, I have a friend who told me verbatim, she's African American, she's like my best friend. And she was like, oh, why? She said, all these Haitians be coming here and getting schooling for free. And, and she was just like down talking when she knows I'm African. But she, to her, she perceives when Haitians or Africans come here and they become doctors and et cetera, they were sponsored by the U.S. or they were given it. Like, that's how she looks at it instead of just they just went to school. There's a lot of black Americans who come who are here being doctors. Do you blame dumb on getting certain special treatment no but we black people have a kind of behavior with that i don't know why it's like it's easier for us to see other groups go above us and beyond us but when when we see our own people advance we feel like it's kind of like you feel like oh why couldn't i do that so then instead of bettering yourself you blame it on the other person because you feel like they must be having some kind of handout or they must have some alternate plan or they must be bringing some white man mentality or whatever it's just excuse because what is Brandon going to do in Kenya that a Kenyan can't do on the floor? They have no excuse, you know? But they're going to go ahead and be like, oh, Brandon, this, Brandon. And that's just really the mentality. Because I see that in the workplace. I used to work in group homes with a lot of Africans and Kenyans particularly. And they, like, as soon as they hear you're going to school, they treat you like shit. And it's like, what am I going to school in America? Anyone can go to school. But because they feel like you're advancing and they look at themselves like, oh, well, I'm not doing that. They treat you a certain kind because they're jealous. But if a white person came up in there and was like, oh, they going to college, they wouldn't treat them like that. Because I guess in their mind, they're like, oh, well, they're white. So it makes sense that they're surpassing me. I think that's the issue, if that makes sense. Okay. We hear you. All right, Brandon, you can talk now. <laughs> I, 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 hey, look, I am coming to take their damn jobs and their opportunities. I ain't gonna make no bones about it. But the you, thing, I don't think, I don't think you rephrase it like that. I don't think I'm you're taking right, jobs. Right. But you're no, creating those. No, it's and you know the reality is that's like you said, people they don't want people that look like them to come do it. They want someone who look Chinese or whatever to come do it because. I think they really feel like at the end of the day, 
once I think Africans have this mindset, like once the Chinese build all this stuff, we just going to be able to kick them out. I really believe that a lot of Africans have that mindset. Once they build everything, they think they're going to pull an ultimate scam. And I really believe that when it all goes down and said and done, it ain't going to end up like that. But that's what I think a lot of African countries are. Like when they take money from the Chinese and stuff, I think they just feel like, well, we'll be able to just renege on this stuff. And what are they going to do? You know, uh, what, 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 Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go, ahead. go ahead. All right. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for get, having me on the show. This is my first time calling and I have been following a lot of your streams. I wanted to address something um, about why Africans um, do, some Africans do in fact fear African-Americans. I wanted to address that. A lot of the callers have kind of talked on, on different things, but I think this is a significant enough um, topic that really needs to be addressed. One, I am an older African woman. I have been uh, in the U.S. and I've moved back to Ghana. I'm both Ghanaian and Togolese because both my parents, one comes from Ghana and one comes from Togo. And, and, and so and, 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 I, real quick, I was in Togo. When I was in Togo a couple of years ago. Like I saw you. I saw you on yeah, the yeah. videos. It, it, it was interesting because my Togolese friend was like, "Look, like literally one day." White man came through with a with some with some chalk or some paint and walked through someone's backyard and then told that person, "Okay, you're now Togolese." And on his other Absolutely. line, other that that line is really line. really true. That is yeah. very true. In in Ghana and Togo, literally, you have a border crossing people's homesteads. You have a brother on one side and a sister on the other side. So that in itself, personally, gives you a perspective on how totally useless the African borders are when you can have families literally living across and one claiming to be one nationality on the other. So you were right. But back to the topic, the thing is this, a lot of African countries, and I want you guys to hear this because a lot of the times people do talk out of context of a lot of the things that are happening. I have heard Brandon say a lot of things that to me are totally, totally a, pro a projection of himself on an African personality. African countries, just like every country in the world, have a mandate to respond to the needs of the people. I'm not going to go into a talk about how our leaders are corrupt and all that. That's a besides the point. The point is this, that the, the leadership has a mandate to respond to the people and what they desire. African countries have not addressed the reasons that African American people and the diaspora perceive as their their driving interest because there is no constituency in Africa yet. When we have more and more African Americans in Africa beginning to make an impact in the society, connecting with Africans, reacting, you're going to see that the African governments will be begin to respond to some of the things that you African-Americans as a diaspora are moving. They, 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 when they go to the polls, even though we all agree that the polls are corrupt, that there's, they represent the needs of, a, of, of the uh, ex-colonial camp, those things are all moot points. The thing is, they have to address topics and issues that Africans in their countries are agitating for. Even if we have a vision and we see that connecting African Americans to Africa or Caribbeans to Africa and stuff are critical for our advancement. How many Africans, you you go to Africa a lot, uh, Prince Dinas, how many Africans have access to even the computer to, to understand? I came to the US when I was about 18 years old. I went to college, I went to master's, I own a software company in America. And I'm telling you my own transition from being an African, beginning to interact with African-Americans, understanding your issues, and now becoming somebody who is very active behind the scenes in getting things to move. It takes a while for the African to shed off some of the, the, the information we get from media, from, from all kinds of you know, subtle marketing. Do you guys know how heavy America is marketed to Africans or Europe is marketed to Africans in your media, in your, uh, in your newspapers, in your articles? There is a heavy marketing to the African youth 
to pull them out. Now for us to reverse that, like the people saying Africans leaving and Africans don't understand the opportunity. You have to understand Africans are not leaving Africa because they do not believe in Africa. But there is a world system where you need capital to invest. Your dollar, when you go to Ghana, you go to Togo and you change that dollar, it's five times the value of their currency. So what are the people going to invest with? That is why you find young men dying. They're not going because they think Europe is better. People need to understand this. They're going because that dollar, the strength of the dollar, the strength of the euro is what is pulling them. Go and work and work like a dog so you can bring some of that home. It is with the dollar that you can build your factory. It is with the dollar that you can make. So partnership between us and you is absolutely critical to meet that gap so that the African with their opportunity and the capital and the skills will come together. So when you say that Africans, some Africans do not like African-Americans, it is too small of a, per, a, a percentage for, for us to even give them the limelight because the average African, when they come here and they take the time and they learn, they understand the connection. Many Africans know when they get the education that you are family. So in Africa, we know Afri uh, families are very important. So based on even that personal anecdote that Africans are family oriented, how will they turn their backs on their family? That is kind of, you know, for me, who thinks on a, on a very high level, that tells you that there is a gap. There's a communication breakdown, and we need to work on that. Brandon, I see your hands coming up. Give me a minute. Because <laughs> yeah. if you start talking, you don't stop. So the point is this, that we really yeah. need to put people in. People should understand. As an African, that's why I kept saying, you need an African on this topic. Africans do not understand, but you, we need to talk, not talk at, talk to. There, most Africans realize when they know the fact that you are family, they would rather do business with you than a Chinese. They would rather do, but at the end of the day, if you have a city and you have a dollar, you're going to be much richer than them. And that's what they chase. Okay, when they come here and they don't go back, I'm not going to touch that because, again, that's personal. I made the choice to go back to Ghana. I have family in Togo, and I made the choice. So everybody deals with it differently. But the overwhelming number of our people are not selling out. They are misinformed, and we need the information. But please don't be critical. Don't be uh, self-assured because you know something, and the African knows something. You don't know what the Africans know. The Africans don't know what you know. Together, we all know it together when we share. I'm done. Out. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Guys, hit uh, people, chat room, hit that like button. We have 800 people watching. Again, hit that like button. We have 800 people watching. If you have not hit the like button, stop being trifling and just hit the stop like button. Being Let me hit the super chat real quick. Um, Otis Thomas, I think a lot of Africans don't want us coming there because what we become president that will open up for more African Americans donations, approved I don't I don't improving low income housing building <laughs> jobs and road. I don't I don't get I don't, off your I, ass and I, hit the I, like I, button. Yeah, that, 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 lost me. that went over I my head. You meant when we're once we're president, like once we're there to open up more money coming in from ah, uh, so he didn't mean president. No, no, he didn't. Dynasty <laughs> yeah, I was a Look, uh, okay, I, can I please respond to that? Because everyone yeah, go ahead and respond. Okay, well, hold on, go ahead and respond. And I, hold on, go ahead and respond. And I, I want to hear after millennial. Okay, uh, listen, go, go ahead. I can take that criticism, what she said, because I understand that the intelligent people in the comment section and watching this understand that what she did was she did something called double speak, right? If you ever read. 1984, the novel, you know about double talk and double speak, right? She basically said three things that are actually opposing ideas, but because she was like very forceful with it and she kind of sounded like Dr. Africana Chambura, you know, a lot of people's like, yeah, sister. But a, a lot of times we go to church, Dinah, black people go to church. The pastor will say some shit that don't make no sense. And they'll jump up and be like, amen, because it's not what's being said. It's the 
the the the emphasis in which is being said, right? So she said three opposing things. First, she said Africans don't leave. They, she said Africans leave because there's no opportunity. Then she said that uh, Africans, uh, they are, she said, we all need to work. We all need to know something. Africans know something. We know something. And we all going to know together. It was, it was very like kind of all over the place. But the point I want to make is this. What she's saying is really, really is untrue because African people who leave Africa, they're not going back to Africa. Africans come to America and make $20 million and never say, well, I've made 20 million. Let me take this money back to Africa and build where I came from, right? That was the double talk. All it was, was I'm angry at Brandon. So now I need to make, you know, I need to go back and attack him. So I'm gonna throw a bunch of stuff out that really made zero sense. And I mean, if you guys can decipher what she was saying and tell me how that made sense, which it didn't, you know, I love to hear it because when you're telling me Africans don't leave because that because uh, when you're telling me Africans leave because they don't have opportunity, when you're telling me that African that Africans uh, uh, the government this was the worst part when she was talking about how the government has an obligation to go, to provide the people with what they want. And somehow she was trying to make the mandate, the mandate, right? She was trying to make it seem like African governments are giving the people what they're asking for. So when I speak about what African governments are failing to do, I'm, I'm off code. I'm, I'm ridiculous. I'm retarded. But when some kid in Africa walks up and asks me for a penny because he, he doesn't have food, what you're saying is African people are telling their governments, we don't give a damn about having food or shelter. We care more about having laptops. We care more about having freaking uh, Chromebook. <laughs> that, that, that's bull crap. And that's what she asserted. Dinus, I don't know if you picked that up from what she was saying. I, I didn't pick that up, Brandon. I guess I, I didn't pick it up. I know my boy B.A. got me on that one. Did you not hear that, B.A.? <laughs> I know she said something about the mandate. Did you hear that, African millennial? Uh, African, African, African millennial. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. You did hear that. I, right? I, know, I, know, I, know, I know what Brandon's trying to articulate. Like, but, yeah. but she tried to make it seem like African government. We ain't got internet. Corrupt, and we ain't got the community. Despite being corrupt, right? She said, despite being corrupt, they are actually, we're all wrong, Dinus. We're retarded. We're crazy. They're actually giving African people exactly what they want. But food, shelter, jobs, clothing, housing, that's not the what they want. Africans want technology. Africans want to be able to go to the movie. They don't care about being able to feed their kids. <laughs> That's what she asserted in the beginning. And that and I was listening to her, to her. But at that point, I knew I couldn't really go back and forth with her because she was operating on a false premise. And I think that was Africana. Africana man, I think that was her. no, no, Brandon. She was just thinking on a higher <laughs> level. Her, bro, she was thinking on a higher listen, level. She's a, listen, she's an elitist person who owned a software company in the United States. She gave her best to the white man, and now she's coming back to Africa with her elitist mindset. And how dare Brandon talk about how Brad? How dare Brandon speak on Africa's dirty laundry? Because those poor people down in the slum, they're giving they're, the government is giving them exactly what they want. They, but they don't need food and clothing and shoes. Just like on Tiger's channel, when the other elitists told me that Africa didn't need roads. Africa don't need Africans don't need roads. They don't need roads. What they need is education, right? And you you know when you're talking to an, an, an elitist African person <laughs> because the things that they feel other Africans need don't actually uh, speak to actual realistic. Research. Okay, let, let, all right, bro, let's get African millennial. Go ahead. African millennial. Hey, the hey, the conversation, the comments, they know what I'm talking about because they heard the okay. same thing I heard. Okay, go ahead, Afro Millennial. I unfortunately I have to agree with Brandon because well, she was using a really nice speech, and when she was talking about how uh the currency is low, um, that's why they can't do things. That definitely is another excuse because it doesn't cost see, it's the whole mindset of people, most people that are there. 
It's not about the fact that there aren't opportunities. Most Africans who actually travel to the West are not the really, 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 really poor ones that are in the villages. It's actually people who are okay, who can actually afford a plane ticket. That is no, no secret, okay? It's not the ones that have absolutely no hope. Those are not the ones that are coming to the West. And I understand some other people will say, okay, well, not everyone who comes here has money. You know, sometimes you have to sell whatever you have to sell to come over here. But still, they have connections to sell whatever they sell to come over here. Um, and then when we talk about how African Americans and diasporans have to work together, there aren't enough diasporans there right now. So what is the excuse? You guys aren't trying to work with anybody else. Right, cool. Okay, right. listen. So go, listen, go, go, I like go ahead, to go ahead, right after. Go ahead. Our, okay, our let me just go ahead. Let me just interject here. Um, the, the elder, the lady that was on earlier, I think Brandon, you misunderstand her, um, because she spec she spoke facts. Okay, let me tell you my own experience as a young African immigrant. Just a simple example of opportunity. America, Europe, they have opportunities. So. If you want to live, you want to make money, you're going to go where there's opportunity, okay? Yes, there's opportunity in Africa, but if you're not a rich person who can go and exploit the iron ore mine, you're not going to take advantage of those opportunities. Yes, Chinese can go there and sell food, whatever, but there are Africans there selling foods and Africans with, with restaurants, okay? So here's the real, here are the facts. There are approximately 2.1 million African immigrants, first generation African immigrants living in the United States. Okay. Number two, of those 2.1 million, they send about $40 billion back to Africa every year. So, this narrative of Africans being sellouts and not doing anything back home is a completely false narrative. The thing is, what we need is a focus, we need a vehicle on how to collectively work together to invest. So if I come here, I came here with my parents. When I left Liberia, okay, I'll give you an example. Science book. My class, there was only one science book. The teacher had the science book. She had to write all the notes on the board and I had to use my notebook to copy everything to prepare for a test. I came to America, all the books, everything was already in the desk including the, the books, plus the answers are already in the back, okay, of the book. Never seen anything like that. So, of course, I smoked them on the grades, okay? So, yeah, there's opportunity in America, okay? But this notion that we, you know, I'm just tired of all the hate on African immigrants because we're actually doing things, okay? And, and uh, by the way, uh. African Manilio, you were talking about that West African stuff. Don't talk, don't get me started on Kenya. Okay. I don't want to get into all of that. Okay, Yeah, I don't want to get into any that, East Coast, West else. Coast that safari somebody else, stuff. Oh, that was somebody else. Okay. Yeah, that right, was somebody I don't want to I don't want to talk when you talk about white a uh, love for white people, that's coming, that's no, not no, no, West no, no, Africa. No, that was somebody you understand? Else. That was somebody else. All right. That was somebody so else. okay, okay, sorry, sister, if that wasn't you, all right? But I heard that I heard that little bit of no, haterism no, no, of not West not. Africa. Okay. I'm a Liberian, okay? And let me tell you one thing too. Brandon, the richest Nigerians are actually Brandon. Nigerians. Okay. The richest Nigerians are Nigerians. Okay, I'm a Liberian. And you know, I respect my Nigerian brothers. So there are people that are doing it. So stop hating on Nigeria, okay? The same because thing right say, now. The same thing you say that you is that you, where you feel like you're addressing me is actually making you guys look foolish because no, you're, you're looking like, foolish because you're hating on you're stop hating on Africans. It's, it's, you understand what I'm saying? Listen, I've been all, listening to your, your for with your with your did haterism you did you on you this whole it? show. Okay, so uh, what you need to do is stop the show. Stop the show. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. Great, great after. See, brother, it says some, some. Well, no, 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 no. But he's saying some to give himself a cover to blow up on all Africans. Okay, <laughs> because that's that's basically it. That's a coward way of doing it. If you're gonna say something about yeah, African okay. immigrants, they come great. out with it. Don't hide behind some. Believe me, bro, I don't need to okay. hide anything. Listen, listen. All right, all right, all right. The black, 
the uh, black on black political intellectual violence is not political intellectual violence for anybody. I'm listening to a brother sit here and insult African immigrants. We come into this country and kick ass. You understand okay, you me? Kick ass. You know what man. we do? Big, and then we send, we send forty. We send forty billion dollars back. All right, home. all right. We got you. We got you. You understand? Forty billion. How much? We how much? Of it? We have African Americans making a huge sum of money, wealthy. They're not doing anything back home. They're not doing anything back, back home. home. They don't got no citizenship. Okay. They're not even they don't have citizenship. But you know what? Just, just like, like the last caller. Like, the last caller. Like, 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 wait, hold on. Stop. Sure. Last caller said, oh, you got to talk to somebody who's African. Like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, so bro, those people, man, we're not talking about those people. We come from their continent. We work with brothers. you. Look, look, okay. well, here we go. You're doing the big, big things in America. Congratulations. Real talk to Congratulations. Story. Congratulations. And I'm also doing things. I'm I'm bi-continental. I'm doing big okay, things in Africa, too. All right. Look, look. Okay. I'm, I'm not here yeah. for that. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. congratulations. I'm here. I'm, yeah, congratulations. congratulate me. Of course, no, no, congratulate me. Can we move on? Can we move on? Kick your ass in Africa. Stop hating. Can we move on? Can we move on then? You 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 are the biggest guy out here. I'm not the biggest guy in Africa. All right, all right. You're pretty up there. I am an African. No, in America, in America, oh my God, bro. Bro. it's not that serious. Okay. It's not that deep. No, 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 no. It is big. It's serious. Uh, uh, it's serious. Great it's, great 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 it's not that deep, bro. Can we move on? Yeah, great. Let, 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 hold, on, hold, on, hold on, Brad. Hold on, Brad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop the show, guys. Hit that Jeez. like button. Hit that like button. Hit the like button. <laughs> Hey, I'm just calling y'all out, man, because y'all talking a lot of crap. Bro, bro, just relax. Just relax. You call this out. All right. Congratulations. You're, you're welcome. All right, here we go. Thank you. Okay. Black Ambassador, go ahead and respond. Then Brandon, All right, cool, cool, cool. And then after All right, go ahead, Black Ambassador. I'm going to go in a different direction. So <laughs> let's take it where it is. Bro, bro, on, good. Man. That's good. Bro, bro, come on. Yeah, chill out, chill Brandon, out, man. You're talking people a lot of crap, bro. The people ain't here for that, all right? So one of the things that I, I find important that when we talk about, I'm looking at facts. I'm going off of the facts only. It doesn't matter. Africa is one of the richest places in the world. That's facts. But look at it. Look at the condition we are globally as a people. As a See, doctor, I've traveled right. across the world for 14 years. I haven't been back in the U.S. in 14 years straight. But every continent I've been in, it's been the same constant, like Dr. Bobby E. Wright says. And that constant is black people, period, are always at the bottom. Whether you go to Latin America, whether you even go to some African countries in Nigeria, do be kicking ass. <laughs> so they do do that. I give them that. And yeah. I think that, that, that that's a damn template that we need to look at and definitely duplicate. But let me move on. The same constant remains that we're at the bottom. And we have to change that. We have to figure, especially amongst African men, what are we going to do to change that paradigm? How are we going to work together as kings to change that paradigm? And I think if anything is important from the last speaker, the one who said what she said, and I think th things got confused in the translation, one of the most important things is she said, the how. We talk right. a lot of yada, 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 but how are people being educated and indoctrinated and informed in certain ways, right? We don't control that. And that's something that we need to control and dominate, create our own narratives, create our own stories and brand our own selves as Africans and as the African continent. And we need to fix that because a lot of mediums we get is WMDs. I don't know if I ever said that before, but weapons of mass deception, not destruction, but deception. We've been deceived in many areas. Many of us speak from points. I know this. I'm like, where's your database? When did you start doing a survey and collecting all this information? We reading it out of article was written by the BBC, thinking about we talking about something. So we have to really focus on building amongst each other as African men and actually squashing a lot of that yada yada. Because I understand we get it and we passionate across the board, but sometimes we got to come in a conversation. And I'm big on when we have these conversations and we're speaking. You make your point, then the next man makes his point, and then we move on to the next subject. Because what happens is we go back and forth. If you watch the Security Council or the AIIB Council, they might not agree, 
But after they move to a certain point, they continue on because the people need to hear what we can do to build amongst black men and black women also. But how do we change that paradigm? And I'm curious to ask the great African, too. Yeah. What does he think yeah. that is? Because I think that's important. And also Brandon and then also African Millennium. What do we really think is one of the one of many? I'm pretty sure all of us would say is to be the biggest key in, in bridging that difference and changing that and giving us that power and sovereignty that we need. Listen, uh, thanks for taking the direction in, the, in a more intellectual, non-insulting direction. That's a good that's a good thing. So we can talk. We can talk. Uh, of course. You know, of course. Yeah. So listen. And wait, you know, let me let me just before you say something, let me yeah. let me say this. I took it that direction because I love you and I love Brandon and I love Dinas and I love Africa Millennial and even a sister before. And I want results. It's not about me. I could be fucking wrong. I'm swear to God, I'm probably am wrong, but I need results. I want other people to have solutions so we can figure that out. Go ahead. Great. I appreciate that brother. Love, love to everybody as well. So one of the things that we lack as a people is a, is we need, we need a platform Basically, we need a vehicle to get us to where we need to go, okay? We can talk about Pan-Africanism. We can talk about a lot of different things, but everything costs money, okay? The reason Chinese are doing well in, in, in Africa is because they went to Africa with money, okay? So we have to work together to say, okay, we know that Africa has the potential. We know that Africa has the resources. How can we actually do something, take it from talking to actually doing, right? So for me, I'm in the agriculture field. I've started very, very humbly, okay? But I have to start something, get it to a level where I can say to, to black ambassador, hey, come and invest in my company. But until I get it to that level, I'm not gonna come to you to say to invest, yeah. okay? Because it takes time, all right? But we're all, we're getting there. So there might be some brothers that are in another field, maybe somebody's in the building or, uh, you know, mining, whatever it is, whatever your passion is, if you love Africa, you want to do something in Africa, find your niche and then figure out the vehicle to get to where you need to go. It's easy to just say, oh yeah, the Chinese are running everything. Everywhere that there are black people, okay, the Chinese, whether if you go to Chicago, okay, it's the Arabs running things in the hood, okay? If you go to, uh, to, to Morovia, it's the Lebanese running things, okay? Uh, except for where I'm from, we actually run things where I'm from because we're rebels, you understand, in Liberia. We own every freaking thing of my hometown. There are probably two Lebanese stores in the whole town, okay? But that was just necessity out of, out of it was out of, you know, necessity that we had to do things. But we have to look at how we can actually do something meaningful, okay? So I sat there, I looked at it, I said, you know what? My background, my people were snatched from where it's now Liberia and they were brought to the United States to grow rice, okay? We made South Carolina the richest colony in the world. You understand that? But yet we in Liberia, were importing 90% of the rice that we produce. So I said, I made a decision. If you enslave my people, and then you became rich and became the number one producer of rice on the, on the, on the, in the world. Well, I'm going to do that too. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and actually start producing rice so that I can cut down. It's, it's a $300 million market. Okay. We paid $300 million for imported rice. So that's my simple, humble focus. So we need to all find where we are. Dinas is in you know, operating in the social media sphere. That's what he does. So, Brandon, I'm not sure what business you do. I'm sure you have a business, whatever it is, you're doing that. So let's focus on doing these things. When I'm balling and you're balling and we decide to come together to do something, we can do it. But until then, we can talk about African immigrant this, African immigrant that, and talk all this yak that's not getting anywhere. Okay? Agreed. America... Yeah. So this is this is that's what it is. OK, so, yeah, you can anybody in America can work hard and earn one hundred thousand dollars. But one hundred thousand dollars in America is a fart in the wind. It's nothing. You understand that? Facts. Uh, yeah, facts. A, it, yeah, it is. It is. It's nothing. But one hundred thousand dollars in Africa. Taxes. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. yeah. 
after taxes, you end up with $53,000, right? And then, <laughs> that's, right. exactly, and, and that's all. So so let's be real about it, um, but let's not, let's not do all this uh, anti-African immigrant. We're just trying to hustle, make money, send money back home, and some of us are actually doing businesses. So I'm going to shut up and let y'all talk. Okay. Uh, Brand, go, go ahead, Brandon, and then we'll pass the African millennial, then uh, Sundata. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, yeah, you know, the whole thing is this. I'm just a realistic person. When I speak, I don't really speak like to certain narratives. I just speak about what's the reality, right? Uh, there's a lot of double speak when you talk to African people, you know, especially African immigrants. It's it's there's no opportunities, but then Africa's great. Don't talk down on Africa. Like they talk down on Africa more than anybody. And then when you say, well, no, yo, let's go back to Africa and do this and do that. Man, there's no opportunities. And then when you say, well, Africa has no opportunities. Oh, no. Why are you talking about Africa? It's just this constant circle. If a person cannot take criticism, they cannot make progress. That's just the reality. There's this ego. Black, Af Black Americans have no room for ego, okay? You don't see me getting on here talking about Black Americans do this and we so amazing and all that. We are on the bottom, firmly glued to it, getting our ass whooped, destroyed by police every day. So we're saying, look, we realize we on the bottom. So we need to get up and we need to get the hell out of here. We running, we tuck and tail, we going to Africa, right? That's what we going to do. But then when we look towards Africa and we say, hey, look, we need to do this and this and that. These things need to change. It's like Africa's terrible. But then, no, don't talk about Africa being terrible. As long as you don't talk about something, there's no way you can fix it. It's like a bad marriage. There's no communication, and everybody's offended more than they're, they're more worried about being offended and, and, and sustaining their ego than they are worried about fixing the problems. That's how marriages end, right? And that's how countries become generationally poor. When everybody is so egotistical, that they are too egotistical to see the problems, take the tough criticism, and approve, improve what's going on. I had someone tell me that African governments are doing what African people want them to do. Then that same person in the comments said, Africans can't get ahead and get opportunity in Africa because there is no capital. So either it's one or the other. African co governments are doing what Africans want them to do, or African governments aren't doing what Africans want them to do because there are no opportunities. In America, the, the people want opportunities, so the government creates opportunities, Dinus. They do what the people want them to do. You can't no, tell I don't, listen, uh, let me just interject. Let me just, inter let, me, let me interject. Let me interject, Brandon, Brandon. Let me interject. Okay, so we have structural issues in Africa. All right. So Africa, if you look at Africa, you got 58 countries, right? This is the Berlin Conference of 1857. Uh, just earlier in the, in the call, they talked about how they just came and drew a line and, and made uh, uh, Togo, and then they made all these different places, okay? So these countries were set up as reservoir, as basically places to support their mother colonies. You understand? So we're under reality is we're under neo-colonialism. Why is it that Africa produces, for example, okay, 60 to 70% of the world's cocoa, but then we're talking about Swiss cocoa. You understand what I'm saying? Perfect. So these are examples, okay? Uh, they stole a lot of our legacy. You're talking about French braids. No, those are not French braids. Those are African braids from West, you know? So there are structural issues that make Africa suffer okay I, so I, so, so so these structural issues are for example liberia world's largest rubber plantation we produce more rubber than anybody else in the world right but we don't manufacture any tires okay so okay. we know the re we know the reasons bro that's what i keep trying to get everybody to understand we are so focused on the reasons no one knows why a bunch of africans still are living according to european Lines drawn in the sand when all y'all got to do is say, damn that, we're not going to honor those lines. we just going to walk across as we see fit. No one knows why, right? Those no, we know why. 
But what's you know the- why? People died. The reason why, let me give you a, a history lesson. Look, it's not that, okay, this is why, you know, you had uh, 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 you had two basic groups. One, the, the United States of America had 13 colonies. You understand what I'm saying? They were not interfered with when they decided to come together as the United States of America and expand West. Africa, on the other hand, we had certain leaders who believed in the United States of Africa, okay? But guess what? We did not have the military might. People like Nkrumah were overthrown. Okay, Patrice Lumumba was murdered. And then we got coons put in their place. So Great. we as a wait, masses... Wait, wait, wait. Listen. But wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, Brandon, real quick. Wait, y'all, 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 so, that thing, so that for thing. example, in the United States, when we had a crack, when we had a crack, crap, when we had a crack epidemic, black people are not flying in drugs and all of these different things that affect black people in America. But right? he's selling them to our own people. The dope deal we, is black. He's correct. So it's the same. The black. So it's the same thing in Africa where you have the sellouts. Okay, that handle things because they benefit from it. The dope dealer benefits from it right that's why he sells drugs to the kids okay in africa you have certain leaders who benefit from the status quo and as a result the masses suffer you understand so you is why do we keep on listen we keep before y'all get i do keep getting interrupted but what i'm trying to tell you is this the african one wants to claim sovereignty and dominance over his domain but then when you mention, you bring up the inconsistencies in his rulership over the domain, he goes and blames the white man. It's the no, white we're man. talking facts, though, no, brother. Wait, wait, wait. You cannot just, that's the that's the defense mechanism. We're it's not a defense mechanism. Man. Listen. It is stating facts and say, let's come up with a solution. I mean, you can, that's Captain Obvious. You understand? We know the problems in Africa. Okay? So repeating the problems over and over and over again. Tell me a solution. You but can't you know what I'm saying? This, 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 this. Me. Well, hold yeah, on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Grant, give us a solution. Go. Okay. The solution to all this is this. You have to act like how chi- the Chinese people do. They don't wait for the government to approve something to do it. They just do it. In Africa, there's a saying, it's better to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. You see in the United States how the Mexicans, they don't recognize no damn borders with the United States. They just come on over Mm -hmm. and they came over in such massive amounts that the United States now has an agenda in this country, which is focused. They're focused more on doing for Mexican immigrants in America than they are for doing for black people in America. Because those Mexicans didn't ask for permission. They asked, they're just gonna ask for forgiveness once they're here. Once the African people stop honoring the borders, that's when the Afri- United States of Africa is gonna become a reality. Once these okay. family members on this side and this side say, damn you, our family is on two sides and we tie that. We gonna build some shit right on the border, right? Once they okay. do that, you're gonna see these countries start to meld together the way they rightfully should be. But and African right. people, African people, when they when you present an issue to them that they can fix, they blame the government. When you present the system, the problem to the government's fix, they blame the white man. You can't keep blaming the white man. You have to fix it. You have to take 100% accountability, and it might take some people getting killed, but it took some Mexicans getting deported and killed for Mexicans to get over into America. But now they here by the millions. We have to be willing to do the dirty work instead of saying, look, I got no, the reason why you got no opportunity in your countries is because the countries are so damn small that the economies can't compete with no other economy. So what do you have to do? You have to erase the borders. How? What's the best way to erase borders? When people stop honoring them and they just start moving. If a million people go to the border, they can't be stopped. They walk right on in. The government can't do nothing about it. But if you stand at that gate, can you please let me in to my native country? 
Like with a passport, they're going to, we got them mentally. We got them stuck. We got them seeing this invisible crap. You, we just got to start doing instead of asking for permission. And then when it comes down to it, we'll ask for forgiveness and they got to forgive you because they can't survive without you being, without you being there. The All right, let me just update you on a few right, things. Let me, let me hear, uh, African millennial, go ahead. African millennial. And then I'll pass it to Sun Dada, then we'll do one more round and close out. So, uh, African millennial. I agree. The solutions definitely have to be let's start taking more accountability and stop blaming other people for all these things that are happening. Earlier, some people were saying, oh, yeah, no, we're doing good. We're leaving, but we're sending money back home. Who's in charge of that money? What is building a billion houses on a continent where the roads are not even good? What is that going to do for anything? We're talking about, oh, like um, where I'm from in Ghana, they're talking about they want to build a factory in this area. The roads are bad, but instead of thinking about that, they're let's build houses, let's build houses. The average Ghanaian there can't even afford those houses. Buy the Mercedes on a dirt road. Yeah. Then what do you expect? They're going to come over here. They're going to get money. They're going to get caught up in the system. And then they're going to say, well, you know, I've been here for 25 years. I've been here for 30 years. At least I try. One thing I will say for most diasporans that are um, outside Instead of always send, I'm not saying don't send your, your family money, okay? Send your mom money. You need to take care of your mom. But start teaching others how to do those opportunities while they're there. They'll still just get lazy, and they'll just depend on you. So that's one thing I, I definitely will say that we need to start doing that and taking that more serious because um, my cousin was talking about how she was going to go buy Chinese food in this um, area. From a Chinese person, and I was like, "Can't you guys cook your own Chinese food? Why does someone else have to do that?" And then you guys complain that like, it's just—I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> we okay. gotta take personal accountability, and that's what we don't want to do. And that's wow. black people all over the globe. We all have a problem with personal accountability. Everybody right. wants to blame, and then it goes to blaming a white man when you got no black people to blame. All right, uh, Sundata, go ahead, Sundata. Yo, 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 what's, what's good, everybody? Um, so, you know, I've been listening, I've been listening <laughs> but I think, um, you know, the real solution is everyone on this call, we have to take power, right? So that is the solution to all these problems. The people who think like us, we have to come to some sort of agreement and we have to start taking actual power because the people in power right now, they're useless, right? And a lot of Africans who might come to the West or other places, I just think that if they don't see the value in Africa, then they're just stupid. You would have to be stupid because everyone else does. I mean, if you're talking about even the colonial struggle, even our, uh, our immediate grandparents understood the struggle and understood the value in Africa in the 60s and 70s. So if someone's saying they don't see it, they're lying. If they're saying there's no opportunity in Africa, they're lying as well. So, you know, there's plenty of opportunity. You just might be dumb. I think that's the real thing. You might be dumb or the leaders just might be incompetent. But there's plenty of opportunity. Uh, for instance, there's this company called Zipline. You know what they do? They send blood and medicine all over Rwanda. A group of white boys from California made that company and now they're getting contracts in Rwanda and Ghana. Anyone could have done that. So I think that we're, we're just not being honest and intelligent with the abilities we do have. And I think the people who understand this, Dinas, Brandon, African Millennial, Great African, me, Black Ambassadors, we need to come together and we just need to start taking power. Right. And I think that's the ultimate solution. Okay. Hey, Dinas, I, I, I want to say this real quick, uh, real quick. I'll give you I'll give you a prime example. Look at the guy who is Dan Gote, the richest guy in Africa, right? That I'm, I would never criticize anything he's doing. I don't know him. I don't know his life or whatever. But would this man not stand to directly benefit by just saying, look, I'm going to invest a billion dollars into just putting roads throughout Africa, throughout Nigeria, just Wherever there's a dirt road, I'm gonna create a program that's gonna he, create. He's doing, a he, Brandon, Brandon, he's, he's doing, doing a lot, bro. He's doing, that, Brandon. He's doing, he's doing a lot. 
So no, I'm not criticizing him. What I'm saying is, okay. but do you see, but do you see what he's doing? He's taking it upon himself. He's not waiting on the government. He's like, this is what we need, and this is what we got to do. If I talk to Dan Gote, I love the song Burner Boy made about him too. But if I talk to this brother, right, that brother's not going to mention waiting on the government at all during our conversation. We have to understand the people who are successful, they look around for the circumstances that they desire. When they If they cannot find them, they create them. As a black people, African people all over the globe, we are looking around for the circumstances we desire. We cannot find them. That means we're going to have to do what? We're going to have to create them, period. So when you get on these channels talking about the government and there's no opportunity and all this stuff, <laughs> we're at this point in our mind where we're looking at you like you a damn fool because you're asking, you're going against nature. No animal go look to another animal to make give him something. He go work to get what he need. And we've lost sight of that because we want the European welfare model. Let's be realistic. We want the European welfare model in Africa. We want the feminism. We want the welfare. We want all the westernized ideas. So what, Af what a lot of people in Africa are waiting on is for the African countries to adopt the, oh, there's welfare, there's Section 8, there's Housing Authority, all that crap. And the ones who, and until that comes, they will be satisfied just taking from their family members over in the West or wherever who are just sending them back money. And they say, look, the cash flow is never going to stop. And so they just, they don't invest it. They don't try to make anything happen. They just say, yeah, I'm starting the business. Keep sending the money. And as long as we have that model, my brothers and sisters here do the same thing. As long as I kept, kept carrying them, they had no incentive to do for self. And until we all start working to do for self, we're going to make zero progress. And we're going to always see this like, not jealousy, but this self-hate where it's saying like, I don't want you going back there. Uh, don't go back there. You can't come over here just doing what you want to do. We need to, everybody just needs to be accountable. Okay, right. so right. listen. So what what, what, what just, we'll do, guys, what we'll do, we'll do one more round. Right yeah. after, go ahead and, and respond and close out and then we'll just, and we'll end it with you, Brandon. But go, go ahead, Brandon. Okay. So here's what I would say. Uh, Africa went through the same colonialism as South America. You understand? So, um, however, we Africans are still Africans, all right? Even though we speak the European language, we still speak our own language. So find me a Mexican that can speak Aztec or whatever their indigenous language is. They're over here fighting for Spanish speaking rights. Every time I make a phone call, I got to pick Spanish or whatever, okay? So for us as Africans, what you're saying as far as trade, we never stop trading with one another. We have ancient trade lines. Europeans drew lines around us, but we're still hustling. You understand? So when you hear that, oh, the average, the typical African lives on less than a dollar a day, it's a lie. Because most of the money that we make in Africa is not, it's not something that you can, you can trace, okay? So for example, where I am, okay, we cross the border, my farm, there's a river, and then there's Guinea, okay? I have cousins in Guinea. Those are lines that were drawn, but it does not stop or impact trade. So what we have to also look at is, don't paint the picture of Africa just sitting around waiting for the government to do something. ECOWAS is doing something. The African Union is doing something. No, they're where not. I am, where I am, let me tell you a fact. I'm giving you facts. Where I am right now, where I live, where, where my farm is, guess what? We have electricity. The government of Liberia was not able to provide electricity up country. But we have the ECOWAS power pool that runs through where I live and then goes to Guinea. That is a collaborative effort of ECOWAS member states to bring electricity throughout all of Africa. That's one of their initiatives. So you got to look at look at ECOWAS, look at their do uh, documents, look at what they're trying to do. OK, so, yes, we want a common currency. OK, so these things are step by step by step. So if we want to go with a common currency, right? OK, the French want to come in and do whatever they want to do. But we're doing things. OK, it's not a bunch of people just saying there's no opportunity or, you know, crying around. No, that's not it. When we say when we talk about our struggles in Africa, it doesn't mean we don't love Africa. It doesn't mean that that we don't think there's opportunity in Africa. OK, so. I just want 
everyone here to educate themselves on what's actually happening. Look at the regional level, ECOWAS. My mother was on ECOWAS Parliament. There's a lot of things that we're doing on the ECOWAS level. You understand what I'm saying? And then the African Union has its own thing. So all these borders are, are artificial. We are Africans. We speak our languages. We weren't completely decimated like the South Americans, where they don't even know what their languages are anymore. They're all speaking Spanish and Portuguese. When you come to Africa, you're dealing with people who know who they are. We still have our institutions. We still are Africans. And we still trade with one another, regardless of the borders and the lines that were drawn around us. So that's it. All right, Sandata, go ahead. Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I just think everyone here, we should all come together and, you know, start some programs. Look at Ethiopia as an example. Um, they finance their Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam using diaspora money and using money locally. Um, so they don't have Western involvement in that dam. And that dam is going to produce enough power to power about five or six nations just off the excess supply. Um, that's why Egypt is so angry at them, because technically the West can't do anything. You know, the Chinese can't do anything. Right. So I, I think we, we need to come together and start pooling this diaspora money to actually fund uh, substantial uh, programs, you know, something something along those lines, some factories. And I think we can circumvent a lot of these issues. But I think, you know, this was a fruitful discussion. All right. Black ambassador. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I agree with the brother also. I think it's very fruitful. Uh, I, w I want to end out on this, and I think Brandon and Great African had a great point, but the key part of this is to take back our power. I hear a lot of people talk about, well, I'm talking about reality. Well, look at the results of our reality. We must follow our own destiny. See, this is funny. Whether you go to North America, you go to South America, and you go to Africa, you look at our ancestors all across the world. And I say, how do I measure up to them? Because at a time when they were living, it was chattel slavery, colonization, concentration camps, murdering Africans on massive amounts of scales. And did they ask themselves, well, this is just reality, we'll deal with it? Or did they say, we're gonna defy those odds? Those people went against odds that I don't even have to go up against. There is no worse circumstance that I have to entangle myself in as an individual African that says that is worse than the conditions of chattel slavery or colonization. But did they sit back and wait to get Kenya back? Did they sit back and wait to claim independence? They did not. What is our excuse? As Dr. Bobby E. Wright said, the last fight is a good fight. It's the last fight for the black mind to become a master once again. This is the focus. Everything else will flourish once we truly relinquish the small little power they have over us, which is mental. This is why I always emphasize on rethinking. The money is not in the West. America just said we need two trillion for this coronavirus. They just did it. They didn't ask nobody. They didn't come to Africa and ask Africans, hey, can we give two trillion? Does that make sense to you? We don't have to ask anybody for anything in this world. It is ours. And we take that type of position. We'll be further than where we are today. Shout outs to everybody who is a part of this. Much love to everybody. But I tell you what, if I believed in the ideas about me or what other people said about me, I would be an African who sees red, white, and blue only. But I see rbg every day i'm with my african brothers throughout the world i'm african first africa for africans and africa was born inside me i don't need nobody else to say a goddamn thing Damn. african power all right uh, uh sister african millennial go ahead okay so i think step one is a lot of people are still under the uh, the um they're not able to and that's really you're break, you're, you're, you're break however i'm not you're breaking up sister all 
Hello? Hello? I think we lost her. Brandon, go ahead, bro. <clears throat> so um, it, I, there's this series that was on uh, Netflix for a while, but I think it's now on the History Channel. It's called The Men Who Built America, right? And I, I love that show. I watch it. It talks about like John D. Rockefeller. It talks about Andrew Carnegie, right? And basically what it shows you is that these people are the people who actually made America what it is today, right? It wasn't the government. It wasn't the president. It wasn't the parliament. It wasn't these unions of countries. It was individuals who amassed wealth by by provide, by uh, filling the needs of the people. Andrew Carnegie invented a type of steel that was used to build all those skyscrapers in Manhattan and in New York, right? He created something that had to be used. It was needed, right, on a large scale. And he became rich, so rich. To this day, he has an Andrew Carnegie Foundation, and he's dead. And they still give him millions of dollars in donations every year, right? John Rockefeller, oil company, oil man. He not only was an oil man, he owned several railroads, right? Oil replaced, you know, the kerosene, what they used to use in the lamps to burn, and it used to light people's houses on fire and stuff, great Chicago fire. Oil replaced that. Oil became the fuel for automobiles. He also was a railroad man. He owned railroads, so he controlled the uh, the, the uh, shipping from one side of the country to another one. He also was the first one to put oil pipelines in the ground. The gas that you get in America, much of it comes through, or through pipelines, right, that John D. Rockefeller put in the ground 100 years ago, right? He put pipelines all over the United States, right? This should be an example to our people. Stop looking at governments and unions to build your, your country. You have to do that. Dan Gote will do more work and more, uh, more, he will have more progress in building Nigeria in 20 years than the Nigerian government will make in 50 years, right? Because that's the reality. Great civilizations are built on the backs of the individuals who see something, they, they look for the circumstances they want. If they can't find them, they create them. Rockefeller said, damn, I, I got all this oil, but I got no way to, to transport it. So you know what he did? He built railroads to put trains on to transport oil. He then said, man, the railroads are cool, but I got to do battle with other railroad barons who stopped my line. They own land that uh, they own the land that I want to take my railroad through and they won't let me do it. They forced me to work with them. He said, OK, well, I'm going to start making pipelines. He saw he was he wanted a certain set of circumstances. He couldn't find them, so he created them. Carnegie did the same thing. As long as we keep operating with this idea that we are going to have to wait for the government or wait for this person to get elected before we're able to make progress, we will always be stuck in the mud. We look at the other nations. Everything the, the, the nation set that, that we talk about about the other nations is pointless. The only thing we need to look at is their ability to go into a place that people believe is hostile and create an opportunity. So I would argue it's not that Africa has a lack of opportunities. Africa has a lack of people who are willing to create the circumstances that they desire. And so what I'm saying is we need people like Great African, Black Ambassadors, me, Dinas, uh, other people, other African people who may have immigrated, who have the means to create the circumstances we desire. We need those people to go back and do that now, or another race of people will go do it for us. And once you do that, you will always control. That's why you hear people to this day still making up conspiracy theories about the Rockefellers. Because that guy will put a crucial part of this nation's develop, development. He was able to secure a generational dominance in this country that will live long beyond us, our, our grandma, our grandparents, and our children. You will still be hearing his name 200 years from now. 
And if you do that in Africa, it will be the same for you. But you have to take accountability first, right? You don't have to be great to start, to get started, but you got to get started to be great. And that's it. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Oh, before we go, before we go, we just got, I just received the first deposit for our tour uh, coming up April 21st to the 30th in Sierra Leone. Just received the first deposit. So everyone, join us in Sierra Leone. All right, come with us, Sierra Leone. Let me share the screen. <coughs> there we go. Join us in Sierra Leone, everybody. Come to Sierra Leone with us. We are going to have a time trip of a lifetime. You will enjoy it. You will love it. Sierra Leone, April 21st through the 30th. Join us. Hit me up for more details. Until next time, family, dynastymirror.com. Make sure you go to dynastymirror.com. Peace.